Mangata la barakata la basta. Mangata la barakati la barakatiti. Mangata la barakata la barakati la barakatata. Mangata katika da la barabagada. Mesa kati la barakati la bakashara. Manji la barakati kati la ba. Makati kati kati la baraka tuta baraka tita baraka tata baraka tila Manga takati la baraka tata Masaka tigada makashi gadi la baraka tila baka Manga tala barabaka de la barabaka tila baka Makata makati kada Pray 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 jabaraka tila baka Pray, pray, pray. 
Mangate katela paraba katela baka. Merci Lord Jesus. Makate katela barakata ta parakate la ba. Mangata kate kate la barakate ta paraba katela barabigrele bini. Masha kate la barakate la baraba katela. Mangata kate la baraba katela baraba katela. Mangate kate la barakata. Thank you Jesus. Hallelujah. Can we raise our hands and thank God for the blessing that we are going to receive this morning? Everybody, it's an expression of faith. Let's thank God. Let's thank God. We thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. If you are happy to be here, can you shout hallelujah? I said if you are happy to be in the final day of GBS... Can you shout hallelujah? hallelujah? I want you to go and greet 10 persons. Just greet somebody. Meet them. Smile to the person. Say, I'm happy to see you this morning. I want you to greet the person warmly. Warmly. I want you to greet the person warmly, warmly, warmly. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Praise God. Um, I want you to shout according to the degree of how you've been blessed in this GBS. Amen. How many of us were blessed last night? Last night was awesome. As in there was so much authority, there was so much grace. There's so much, as in so much power that yesterday. I'm so sure that those words penetrated our soul deeply. Um, we are grateful to God for the gift of our daddy, um, Daddy Oyegoke. Praise God. This morning is going to be awesome. Um, before daddy comes up, our pastor, Pastor Tokwe Falaye will be ministering to us. How many of you have been waiting for this session? Amen. Uh, pastor Tokwa is our own pastor. Um, you know, guiding us, pastoring us, um, covering us, counseling us, helping us, straightening us. Um, pastor Tokwa is the one that all of us gathered pastors want to be like. If we are like Pastor Tokwa, then we have made it. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Um, Pastor is going to be blessing us. I'm, I'm so expectant, you know, this morning for um, what God is going to do through, you know, our pastor. Um, with a good God bless you, with reverence in our hearts as we stand, can we clap our hands and receive the ministry of Pastor Talk of Falai. Good morning, everyone. Can you welcome someone to your right, someone to your left? And greet someone you've not greeted before since on Wednesday. Hallelujah. 
It's good to see everyone here this morning. Let's say amen. amen. You may please be seated. Thank you, sirs. Standing over you, ye with an open door, see the Spirit. Hallelujah. And receive the word of the Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your word. We receive your word with reverence and thanksgiving this morning in the name of Jesus. Amen. I'd like to begin by appreciating our pastors that are here, uh, our pastors that lead us, that the Lord has put great trust upon for the leaders here in Gadites. Uh, uh, let me start by appreciating God for our daddy here in Gadites. Though a young, a young man, you know, vibrant, you know, um, fortright, you know, uh, minister of the gospel, you know, though young, but the burden of the Lord that the Lord has put upon him under our parents you know, is overwhelming, and the Lord is helping him to bear it, himself and his brothers. I'm sure you won't mind, every one of us, uh, in the spirit of honor, can we be on our feet as we appreciate God for our pastor, Pastor Leke Omilano, and his wife. He's my younger brother. But that does not take anything away from what the Lord is doing in him and through him towards you as Gadites. Pastor, thank you very much, sir. The Lord is your strength. I know the burden of the responsibility our Lord Jesus has put upon you through our parents, Daddy Amomi Oyegoke, and our pastor, Daddy Egochuku Momi Lilian, is more. Um, it's not, um, you understand? Understand, you know, but it's beautiful that the Lord can trust you, you know, um, with that responsibility, like Daddy said to die to go to lead, you know, um, in Gadites, and we don't take it for granted, and we don't take you and your wife 
for granted. Can we put our hands together once again for Pastor Lake? Thank you to you and help you in the name of Jesus. Can we also appreciate Yes. You know why I might not call everybody? There's no way I will start, I will leave somebody out, and that's the truth. But be appreciate, know that you are appreciated by our parents, by God's people, and much more by the Lord. Let's say amen. I'd also like us to, you know, appreciate God for our big daddy, God's servant, Pastor Emeka Eguchuku. I think we can do better. You are not trying. Do you know Pastor Emeka? Really, Pastor Emeka is the pastor of Gadites. Wisdom of administration and labor since 2012. You understand? Under that, there you go, okay, Pastor Emeka has labored and labored. At some point, he dragged me along. So, Pastor Emeka has labored here. Pastor has spent time and energy and blood and sacrifice, you know, laboring over us, you know, together with Mommy Lillian. Can we say we love you, sir? We love you, sir. I'm not hearing you. Can we say we love you, sir? We love you, sir. Can we say we love you, ma? We love you, ma. Thank you for fathering us. Thank you for fathering us. Hallelujah. Amen. Then lastly, and mostly, can we appreciate God for our father here in Gadites and our mother, daddy and mommy Oyegoke. You know, when we do these things, it's not a style. Neither is it a human worship. It's also part of the attitude of incorruption. You know, scripture talks about the generation. You know, I think it's Proverbs 30:11. They say there is a generation that cursed their father and doth not bless their mother. He said, there is a generation that is pure in their own eyes and yet is not washed from their iniquities. God forbid. You know, one thing that you find about people who are corruptible is that they don't properly discern and honor their father and their mother. And that's not us. We do that in honor of the Lord and discernment of the grace that the Lord had made available in our generation for us. So Daddy and Mommy Oyegoke, we love you, sir. We love you, ma. People like me, I don't have any business with, you know, folks anywhere without you. And I know much more, all of us in Gadites, we're all in your bowels. We're all in your womb to be born by Jesus at the appropriate time. Can we all lift up our hands and thank the Lord for God's servant, Reverend Kyle Oyegoke, and our mommy, God's handmaiden, Reverend Mrs. Ellen Oyegoke, for their labor, for their consistent labor over us, day and night, obeying Jesus, laying down their lives, embodying the conversation of life and everlasting life unto eternal life. We are grateful that in our generation we have models to look onto. We have people you've found worthy to raise as apostles and leaders to point a generation to incorruption to you, for which we are grateful from the sincere depths of our hearts. We say thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come under your grace that is on your servants, our parents, and our pastors here in Gadites. Help me to serve under your spirit 
that is on your servants, Daddy Oyegoke, Mommy Ellen, Daddy and Mommy Eguchuku, and under the grace you placed on Gadites. As I ministered this morning as an elder brother, pastor to them, inspire me, anoint me, grant me leading, direction, utterance, and compassion. Help me to say, you know, again some of the things your servant would have reiterated in a way that it will come across, you know, you know, clearer to everyone this morning in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may please be seated. So I have um, a two-sided responsibility. I'm 15 minutes in. I started at 9.45 or thereabouts. To explain some of the things that um, Daddy thought yesterday again. And to also you know, say some things as an elder brother that I feel um, would be of help to you. You know, folks who are you know, now in Gadites. Let's say amen. Let's turn our Bibles to Hebrews chapter 1. Let me just start, you know, very subtly and for the sake of um, explanation. Hebrews chapter 1. So some of the things you heard yesterday. Hebrews chapter 1, I read from verse 1, God who at sundry times and in diverse manners speak in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, at in these last days spoken unto us by his son, whom he had appointed heir of all things by whom also he made the worlds. Let's say amen. So the author of Hebrew, Paul, is saying, in old times, there is how God speaks. God who at sundry times, in old times, and in diverse manners, speak unto the fathers by the prophets, at in these last days, Pastor Taiwo, spoken unto us. So there is, God has manners in how he speaks. God is not man. And obviously if he is not man, he won't speak as man. What makes man, man, is so deeply rooted into us that it also affects how we speak. It affects the manner of our communication. The fact that I'm a minister of the gospel who speaks by the anointing of the Spirit does not mean I speak exactly in the manner God speaks. God speaks, but there are mannerisms to how he speaks. So the author of Hebrews, here in Hebrews chapter 1, is saying God who in old times or different times and in various manners, spoke in times past unto the fathers by the prophets. So God spoke through prophets in manners. If you read Jeremiah, you see manner. God, you know, tell him lie down on this side. Is God speaking? Then you know you read. You know, I think one of the other prophets go and marry an allot. Is God speaking? Shave your hair. Is God speaking? Then the way they wrote. The way they lived is God speaking. The Son of God speaks. Or the manner in which the Son of God speaks. The fact that somebody is born again, is filled with the Spirit, you know, knows God's word at good levels, or probably has gone to Bible school, and is anointed and is called to the ministry, does not mean that you know, he speaks, or I speak, let me use myself as an example, the way the Son of God, the Son of God also has his own manner of speaking, 
that doesn't line up with the way man expects him to speak. There is a way man expects God to speak. Because there is conflict of life between us in our soul and the Son of God, there is also conflict of how we expect him to speak. So when the Son of God is speaking, it will most definitely contradict every and any person who does not have that pedigree of life that the Son of God has. So the Son of God, when is the Son of God, of course there's a sense generally is the Son of God. But Hebrews chapter 1 is talking about his sonship at the highest pedigree. And when he's speaking from that pedigree, to be frank, most likely we may not understand. What did I say? We may not understand. I'm not lying to you. If some of the things we learn, most of us are university students, you understand? You know, the first time, how many of you, maybe the first time you wanted to do a course, the first few, um, what's it called? Lectures. Sounds like you are hearing Aramaic yeah. or Greek. You understand? Not because the man wasn't speaking English, but the manner in which the man spoke and what he was saying is strange to the templates of our hearing. So also it is in spiritual things. Satan had spoken us away from hearing God. So when we got born again, the Lord, every level of the word of God is an allocation to retrain us to hear God. A person who just got born again can never understand the Son of God speak. It's not a cause. If Jesus shows up and speaks in the pedigree of his height, he will be speaking English and you will not understand. Now I can assure you, if you feel that the ego case is difficult to understand, Jesus will be much more difficult to understand. Now it's just, a, you know, it's just an argument. I want to make an argument. Because why? Satan fights where Jesus is speaking. Anytime Jesus, even in the days of his flesh, you can get me some of those scriptures. You understand? When he talks, people don't understand. Now, those who think they understood, only understood certain things. The core of what he's saying, they can't get it. He said, and it's Matthew 13, 10, 11, and the disciples came and said unto him, why speakest thou unto them in parables? Now, can I say this? It's not, yes, he's speaking in parable, but this is a manner of him speaking. So when you read Jeremiah, Obadiah, Hosea, Isaiah, when you read Daniel, they are manners, and those manners is the Holy Ghost speaking to reveal things at the same time, conceal things. So he is revealing by concealing and concealing by revealing. And it is the manner through which the Holy Ghost in the prophets spoke. But the highest manner of concealing, if you, know, you bring Jeremiah and he listens to Jesus, he may not understand Jesus. If you bring Isaiah, they will need to sit and hear and hear and hear and hear and hear because he said the things that prophets and righteous men, what was not revealed to them, those ones who were struggling to understand, they are the things that Jesus spoke. And their ears were blessed to hear Jesus, but they didn't understand. So what I'm trying to say is that the things that we are hearing, the first argument is that if you feel you don't understand it, you understand? It's not out of place to start with. Let's say amen. amen. Now, am I starting to say you can understand? Touch yourself. Say, I can understand. I can understand. Everybody, some people are not touching themselves. Touch yourself. Say, I can understand. I can understand. Say, to me, is given to understand the mysteries of the kingdom. <laughs> you can understand. And you must understand. Let's say amen. amen. But it's also good to know as part of help, that where the thing is coming from, the words that are being imported, 
are being imported from a realm that does not yet exist. The things that are being spoken are things from the world. Imagine they are telling you about the world to come. In the days of Noah, rain had never fallen. And Noah told them it's going to rain. It's not, the rain is not a world to come. The rain is something that has not occurred in the present world. It's, the thing is there. It can happen. In Genesis 1, he said God has not caused it to rain. So the technology of rain has been there. In Genesis 2, when God, but God had not made it happen. So in Genesis 6, hundreds of years later, probably a thousand years, Noah was telling them rain is coming. So rain has always been there in God's mind. There is something called rain, but it hasn't fallen. So when Noah was telling them it will rain, it sounded strange, mysterious, but it's there. Now, how much more if they are telling you things of the world to come? So as children of the prophets, children of our parents, daddy and mommy, okay, I want you to know that the manner in which the son of God is speaking, you understand, it may seem strange, but the reason for it being said over and over is so that it won't be strange. Let's say amen. amen. So it's good to know that, you know, you know house, testimony, there are things that those are how the Son of God sounds. Yeah. It is all those voices that are, some of them, not purely the voice of the Son of God from the scriptures that has retrained us and made us not able to hear the Son of God, for what, you know, all of what he is and all of what he can give. Let's say amen. amen. So he said, God who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophet at in these last days spoken unto us by his son. So when the Son of God is speaking, we need mercy. When the Son of God is speaking, we need to trust God for help. Particularly when he possesses vessels and begins to talk. I was talking with one of your pastors this morning. And he was telling me the first half of the meeting yesterday night. Everybody liked it. You know, creation, spirit, like that. That, you know, they are, everybody's used to that. But when it got to seed and, you understand, that people began to drop. You understand? I said, I can understand. You understand? But it's just a matter of time. One year, two years, three years, before you know, everyone will catch up again. So the first argument is to debunk that, you know, because Satan can put that. He can just be hanging as thoughts. Evil birds can just be flying. You understand? What kind of thing is this? You understand? There's nothing strange to it. It is the voice of the Son of God. In the servant of God, Reverend Kyle Oyegoki. Let's say Amen. Can I say this? When Paul said, at in these last days, spoken unto us, how did he speak unto, unto that generation? How? Pastor Telema, how? It's true, Paul. It's true, Paul. So when Paul is speaking, the Son of God was speaking because they chose him to see the just one and hear the voice of his mouth. It doesn't mean Paul will be hearing Jesus speaking. As he opens his mouth, it's a commission that as he opens his mouth, he's saying, he's, that's, that those are you know, choices of God's sovereignty. You can't desire it. You can't pray into it. You can't say, I want to be faithful for the Son of God to speak to me. No, it's sovereignty. Sometimes he may, you know, when that thing is behaving through the servant of God and you are sons of the prophet, Gadites are children of our parents. You are peculiar children that they are carrying in their bowels. When they are talking, you know, I had a board in whether they was ministering yesterday that you should trust God. Are you one of the reasons, amongst other reasons, why the Lord brings Gadai from different parts of the world and it's going to get bigger and bigger by God's grace, you know, as the years go by? It's so that you drink first hand from that spirit that is birthing you. When our pastors come from different places, from here to different places to minister in Nigeria, outside the country, you know, they carry that spirit to minister. But you come and see that behavior. Some people go to camp meeting those days in the 80s just to see. Just to see. Some of them, they are not necessarily hearing. They've listened enough. They just want to see that thing behave. 
You know, in assemblies of God in the UK, they will bring Smith to forth. When they have done Bible school, the end, the last, you know, lab, they will bring Smith to God to come and teach as an apostle and prophet of the faith towards God. Just for students to see that ministry. Because that sighting is an initiation of some sorts. So it's good to know you, what you're seeing behaving as ministry being ministered to you is also an initiation. It's a bridge. If you see it long enough, after some time, the things will begin to behave raw towards you. Let's say amen. amen. So the, the you know, ministrations are manners that the Lord allows. And it shouldn't be strange to us. Let's say amen. amen. Now let me say some, some other things. I'll start from you know, just um, admonitions. Then I'll explain you know, in the measure I found grace and by instruction of daddy yesterday, you know, some things around the things that were taught. Now, I know that we've come from different places and God has shown us mercy. Let's say amen. amen. We are different levels of our growth. Yes, you know, you're part of us in Gadite. I say us because I'm a Gadite. Let's say amen. amen. You know, but some of us still find ourselves you understand, you know, we were all like that at some point. Gadite or not, you understand, wherein you still feel like, is this the thing? You put your water, your leg into the water. You test it. Then you put your leg into another water. You test it. But can I tell you the truth? There are many words outside. There are many, many teachings and teaching spirits, you know, emphasis, many of which are of the Lord. They may not be hardcore, you know, preaching Christ, everlasting life, eternal life, but they are things that the Lord himself raised in the body and they can be of blessing greatly. To any person who is sincere about wanting more of God. And also, there are many things that are not of the Lord. That cannot be shied away from. We are young people. As some of our pastors, young people, I know young people are adventurous. There are many things that can leak out strength and waste our time. There are many things that can sap the energy that we need for this journey. Part of the wisdom that can help us, can I say this, everybody look at me, you know, part of the wisdom that can help us really, really, really prosper in this part, as somebody who has worked it very, very short time, you understand, is, you know, staying consistently on the things you are hearing. Let's say amen. amen. If you take one cup of word of righteousness and you take one cup of something else, I can assure you, you may, you may stay 10 years for what you should stay in six months. Now, it's good to look at your pastors, which are my brothers. Look at your pastors. You understand? There is a wisdom in looking at those that the Lord had set before. For the purpose, sometimes... All you just need is simple trust in the arrangements that the Lord has made available for the community of Gadites. Because you be, you, maybe you'll be in school and you see somebody who prays for 10 hours. You know, that's, that's a, it's a wine. That one is a strong wine, you know, that is amongst young people. Pray for seven hours. Pray for, you understand? Bless God for it. There's nothing wrong with prayers. But can I tell you, no amount of prayer can change nature for all of what nature is. It didn't begin by prayers. It began by eating. So why prayer is good? I'm not lying. Imagine if I'm praying seven hours a day with the little I know. I'll be so good. Imagine me too. I'm thinking if I can be praying seven hours, you know, plus all the, you understand, you know, so... But, but if I am not careful, I can pride in my prayers. It will 
There is something about the way the Lord tempered us. Some things look like infirmity. Just be like, you know, you people don't do this, you people don't do that. Anytime something is talking to you like that, no, that thing is about to shift you out. Eh? Just trust God to stay so that you will understand. Trust God to stay. Just stay on the things that are being taught. Stay on it. Eh? You know, stay. Listen to the same tape. And one thing God has blessed Gadites with. And the parent ministry of Gadites, you understand, is plenty of words. You understand? Listen. Can I tell you the truth? You know, sometimes some people listen to that, they feel like some of these things, are you sure these things are in the Bible? This morning while I was waiting, I don't know of people who are so worded like word of righteousness. The amount of word. The amount of word. You know when that is talking, you understand, that is he's talking from a fatherly point of view. Because he's an apostle, he's a prophet, you understand, being moved by the spirit. He just touches this and touches that and touches the but the amount of word that is a back, the word base is too much. The word base, one conclusion can be 100 scriptures. Years of staying with Bible and Bible. You know, sometimes Satan can tell you this thing is not in the Bible. He has told us before. He has told us before. So you need to know, you understand, you know, so that you will stay and be satisfied. What this word wants to make out of us is saved souls, incorruptible people. If that is the goal, if that is the dream, I can assure you, nothing will easily move you. You just stay and listen. I have that staring in my heart. Just trust God to stay on this word. Eh? The word that is not wanting to make you a minister, even though you will be a minister. He's not wanting to make you a millionaire. Even though if the Lord so wills it, you'll be a millionaire. All that word, word of righteousness, Christ, everlasting life or incorruption, you understand, wants to do is to save me. As somebody who has stayed around it for some time, I can tell you, it's the best way to sleep and wake. Eh? Just having this word dominate our lives. So as young folks from different places, I want to admonish you, stay on the word. When I say stay on the word, stay on the alignment of the doctrine as it is being handed. Can I tell you, there are many kinds of spirits. Eh? If you don't stay with doctrine the way they are aligned, you just push your head, something will rest. Eh? So just stay. It's a discipline. We will all have to fight it. We will all have to fight it, particularly in a generation where there are many, many things. If we will be incorruptible, one place where we will be incorruptible is in doctrine. Paul spoke to Timothy. He said in doctrine, incorruptible. Wow. Gravity. Eh? So we have to trust God. You see the thing that behaves on daddy, that behaves on mommy, it's apostolic spirit of a great strength. The way the thing just, it looks normal, Abby. When daddy is talking, it just looks like maybe he's the one making it. No, there is something inside of him, upon him, that makes him behave like that. And that thing is churning out alignment. And can I say this? We are the ones, I add myself to you. <laughs> Eh? We are the ones that are meant to understand that the most. Pastor Leke, we are the ones. If people are struggling, it is our lot. Yes, Anybody who feels, ah, what is this trying to say? Add yourself to it. It is our lot to understand daddy, to understand mommy. To un no matter how complex it gets, we'll be eating it like biscuit. Amen. Just jokingly. Just jokingly. Be like, oh, so everything you understand, I understood it. You understand it. I understood it. You say, okay, you are lying. I understood it. it it's not being said not to be understood. Not that there are procedures to it. Eh? Stick with it. Let's say amen. amen. Another thing the devil does that can shortchange us is accuse those who speak. He can start by, he can accuse your pastors step primarily. Then he can accuse, you understand, you know, the people who are preaching it like our parents. He can accuse them. He can bring anything. And all of what he wants to do if he does that is that he wants to break the line of blessing so that understanding would not get to us. And you can't, I can't be incorruptible if I don't understand. 
The generation that will be incorruptible is the generation that will be full of understanding. I mean, their understanding level will be so high, so top-notch. Let's say amen. amen. Let me go some into some of the things that Daddy you know, thought yesterday for the purpose of saying them again. Ephesians chapter 4. Let me take a leave from Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians 4. Daddy began the same thing two nights ago. Of course, on Saturday, uh, Wednesday morning, Daddy Eguchu could thought on the blessing where Pastor Leke started from Ephesians chapter 1. You know, spiritual blessings. Daddy thought along that same line that Pastor Leke began from. And our mommy also came. Mommy thought in that direction also went to the book of Ephesians. You know, then in the night, two nights ago, you know, Daddy just made open declarations about shifts of things from America down to Africa and taught some, some on the issue of the ark, you know, things in the book of Revelations. Then yesterday, Daddy really sat down and did teach. And Daddy began teaching on the issues of creation. Everybody say creation. creation. Ephesians chapter 2, I read from verse twenty. Okay, chapter 2. Did I say chapter 2? Let me read chapter 4, Ephesians chapter 4. If so be that you have heard him and been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And that you put on the new man which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Now we all heard that over and over. Daddy stayed there for almost one hour back and forth. Daddy taught for almost four hours yesterday. He stayed there back and three, three hours back and forth on that particular scripture. Everyone look at, look at me. He said, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Now man is essentially a spirit that has a soul that lives in a body. Let's say amen. amen. In Genesis chapter 1 verse 27, his spirit was created. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Then he blessed them. Now, of course, Daddy has taught these things for decades. So I'll take from many years of hearing and explain some of the things that he has explained yesterday. Now, man is a spirit and he has a soul. His soul consists of his mind and his heart. So if a man dies today, they say somebody died, his spirit soul comes out of his body. In Genesis 1.27, what God created was his spirit and soul. Our daddy, Pastor Emeka, will say the soul is an organ of the spirit, which consists of the mind and the heart. Now, that's, you know, mind and the heart that is an organ of the spirit. It's not, it's not like when the man, if a man gives up the ghost, like James 2.26, the spirit without the body is dead. So his faith without works. It doesn't mean if a man dies that you see two things come out of his body. No, it's just one entity that will come out of his body. And that one entity that comes out of his body is a man. Full blue man. One head, two hands, two legs. But that man has what is called mind upstairs attached to it and at downstairs. That's what is called soul. Now, when God created man in Genesis 1, 27, in 26, he says, let us make man. It's a big agenda. 26 is a big agenda. Things that has to do with, you understand, everlasting life. Pastor Tosin thought some years ago. But in 27, he came down to begin something, which is, you know, he did the creation. I remember two years ago now, it's now two years, when daddy thought, 
in School of the Spirit, that Ephesians chapter 4, from verses 20 down to maybe 23, 24, arguing that he doesn't feel that creation put off the old man, new man, that he feels, he knows by the grace God has given him, that that is talking about Christ. He's not talking about everlasting life because of the word creation. So in 27, God created man's spirit. Then he blessed it in 28. Now, that blessing he blessed it with is a blessing you can liken to spirit. Now, God created spirit and there is soul attached to it. Then God now put spirit inside of it. Now, the soul is an entity that is meant to house everything about man inside of it. The soul is the middleman. Is the man that connects the spirit to the body. At the same time, is the man that you know is meant to inherit everything about the outward man and the inward man in itself. It is what the soul has. Because the soul is the one that is the hardware that carries the software that the whole man should run on. So, spirit is a spiritual hardware. Let me you know, go through some of the route that they went through yesterday. Soul is a lower than spiritual hardware. Because soul is spiritual. But not as spiritual as spirit. Let's say amen. amen. Eh? Spirit is wind. Soul is air. Such, nefesh in the Old Testament, in the Hebrew, in the New Testament, such. Yeah? But body is a solid substance, as it were. But spirit is pneuma in the Greek. Is ruach in the Hebrew, as it were. So spirit is spiritual. Soul is lower than spiritual. But the nature of the soul can connect with the spirit. And the soul can connect with the spirit and effectively also connect with the body. The soul that is made up of the mind and the heart can connect with the brain. The upper one that is the mind can connect with the brain. The lower one can connect with the heart downstairs here. Let's say amen. amen. Now, it's a hardware, the soul, but every software that will run the man is meant to be installed in the soul. So though God created them in that Genesis 1.27, then God further put blessing into the soul. And that blessing that God put is the knowledge of what the man is as a spirit. God put it inside of the soul. So you can say, when you look at the soul, there is some kind of spirit in the soul. Let's say amen. So Adam's soul wasn't void of spirit from that beginning. Now when they say spirit, it doesn't mean it's something that has one head, two hands, two legs, and is yawning. They will not be like, you are no longer spirit, soul, body. So is it spirit, soul, body, then another spirit? No, not spirit as an entity, but spirit as a program. Spirit as a written law. Every nature... That the spirit is, the way the spirit behaves, how it should, you know, land. God wrote it and put it in the soul of Adam. Let's say amen. amen. Then God went further in Genesis chapter 2 and formed his body and breath into his nostrils, the breath of life. So daddy explained, daddy took time yesterday to explain first of all the issue of creation. So when Adam disobeyed God. God told him, in the day you eat of this tree, you will surely die. When he disobeyed God, Satan killed the spirit. Let's say amen. amen. But there are things in his soul that can't be killed immediately. It's just like, you know, you can, you can shoot somebody and paralyze the person. But the things the person knows, it take, but if maybe you meet a professor, as long as his brain is working... How many of you have heard about Professor Hopkins that's dead now? You understand? Couldn't move, you know, moves with machine, but his brain, 
His brain, the things he was doing even in that state. <laughs> eh? Now, because why? There are laws that are inside of him that he is still using, even though his physical body is shut down. So though Adam and his wife died in their spirit, but they still had spirit or blessing inside of them, running them, as it were. Let's say amen. With time, with dead spirit, Satan was able to erode that law. Or erode that software, which is a type of Christ. He eroded it. Now, Jen Adam in the beginning is purely everlasting. But deep down within him, that Eric said some weeks ago, God buried deep down within him the laws of Christ. Deep down within him, even though he was an everlasting man. Now, with time, Satan succeeded to erode that spiritual man or that spirit law. Satan eroded it and Satan replaced it with another one. So when Paul was writing in Ephesians chapter 4, he said, be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Meaning, and he was, he was talking to a whole church. Everybody say a whole church. A whole church, every one of us, we have what is called, you know, you might just feel like, I, mean, I don't have spirit in my mind, I reject it, I don't have, you have it. It's a program, everyone, as long as you are born of a woman, eh, that thing is there. It's there, it's been attached to systems. It's in us, and the thing is there, is a law. Bible calls it in Romans chapter 8, the law of sin. And death. It exists as a spirit inside of us. We use it to live. So when we're born again, we're born again in our spirit. We became new man in our spirit. Second Corinthians 5.17 If any man be in Christ, is a new creature. So our spirit is a creature that is new. Adam's spirit is a creature of the old order as a man. And God put a spirit in the soul that runs it. That Adam knew how to behave as a spirit after that order. Now we are born again. We now have Christ's spirit as our human spirit for want of better language. But we still have old man. Everybody say old man. Or corrupt man. So when they say corrupt man, they're actually talking about spirits. That thing is in our mind, is in our hearts. We use it to live. So everyone who's born again, we got born again in our spirits. In our human spirit, we are new. Quickened with Christ. Sit with him in heavenly places in Christ. But the way we think, we are still dominated by the old spirit. And when they say old spirit, it means we, our concept of what spirit is, is wrong. If it is wrong, we, it, you know, we will behave after the old manner. We don't see, we don't live like people who have the new world in view. One thing, one good foundation for every person who will break free from the present is that we have to learn the new man, which is Christ and his laws that is spelled out in faith, hope, and charity. Let's say amen. amen. As gatherers coming from different schools, I know that shouldn't sound strange. Yeah? So the learning of the new man is actually the learning of faith, hope, and charity. Put another way, the learning of the new man is actually the learning of the outer court's laws and the holy place laws. Meaning laws of the outer court and holy place being installed inside of our soul. We are it. In our spirit. But we are meant to become it. In our thinking. In our reasoning. And eventually in our living. We are meant to live out. Christ's 
nature as a result of the law of the spirit of life that God puts in us. Let's say amen. amen. So that it took time yesterday night to explain the issue of creation. So creation has to do with our spirits. So if you, anytime you find creation, as per a believer in scriptures, in the New Testament, is most likely referring to our spirits. If any man be in Christ, there is a new creation. In 2 Corinthians, in Ephesians chapter 4, you know, the new man, which is created in righteousness and true holiness. We are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, unto good works. So creation has to do with our spirit. Now, what is created in our spirit? They now want to preach it to our soul. So it is the preaching of that new man to our soul that turns us from being corrupt to being non-corrupt or free from corruption. Let's say amen. amen. So that existed in a, in a figure in the beginning. And now that we are born again, it still exists now. So somebody don't feel like maybe what is, you know, you know reverend teaching, what is Pastor Emeka teaching, what are, you know, Pastor Lake, what are they teaching? They're not teaching anything that is outside of scriptures. They are just teaching. You know what? It's because of another voice. Another voice, another eyes. Another eyes, another hope that now makes the voice of the Son of God sound strange. But if we stay around the right waters long enough, we will be parched. And we will discover that the scriptures was given for one purpose. The best way to summarize the whole Bible. Look at Genesis 1, 2, 3. That the Yuki will say. In Genesis 1, 2, 3, the eternal ordinance of scripture was actually earmarked. So you can't break. That's what Jen Leib, amongst other things, says. Eternal antitype was set from there. Meaning it must align. So in teaching Christ, we teach new spirits. Put off old man means put off old spirit. Oh, meaning the, the way we live on earth is as a result of our sense of spirits. Somebody can be wanting heaven at last, heaven at last, heavenly race, heavenly race. It's old man behaving. Somebody can be praying seven hours, eight hours. It's old man behaving. So to be spiritual, everybody says spiritual. spiritual. Spiritual really begins with the eyes of understanding, being enlightened to, be, you know, for the, to see who the new creature is. So Christ, the preaching of Christ is the preaching of the new man. You already are it in your spirit. But they now say, come and learn it with your mind. Come and learn it with your heart. Then come and obey it. Wow. Now, in obeying it, your soul at some point will be brazen altar. Yeah. Your soul at some point will be brazen lava. Yeah. Your soul at some point will be lampstand. Your soul at some point will be altar of incense, meaning they will build those things into the soul by preaching. And when you so get to the peak of it, which is the veil, you understand? He said the man is a godly man. Or the man has made peace. So, the, oh, meaning they transfer outer court, holy place, into the soul by preaching. Let's say amen. amen. So, God in a wisdom, when he was creating, you know, you know, you know the new man, he actually tattooed the laws of outer court and holy place. He tattooed it into our spirits. How we should behave. Then he now says we should come and learn it. And God raised fivefold ministers whom he dealt with to labor in preaching. I just listened to yesterday night's meeting again and I saw a whole lot of labor. One thing you can use to know a place wherein truth is being taught is labor in doctrine. Labor. Everybody say labor. labor. One inheritance that Satan has taken eh, is inheritance of the church. He has taken ability to labor. If they say count them of double honor, who labor in word and doctrine? Where were they laboring? Is it to themselves? They were laboring amongst church. Paul, Paul will preach from night. 
till morning. He said he preached day and night for two years, continually, non-stop. Then who are the people listening to him? They feel like this message is too long. Which message? How many messages have we heard? How many messages? Before rapture will come, I believe we will be in church. Maybe rapture will meet all of us in church. Yeah? As people are going to work, they are streaming. As they are coming back, mothers will be back in baby going to meeting. From meeting, they, after meeting, they will be cooking pots. It's possible. The earth will so feel the presence of Jesus. It will be meeting, 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 meeting. If we will be the incorruptible generation, we should start getting used to it. Imagine you who has been used to five hours meeting. When you marry, how would you be? How would your child be? Would your child be fearing meeting? <laughs> they might even burn her in camp. <laughs> yeah? So really, the, the attitude of laboring. So you see, you know, at times when meeting drags, it's also to test our hearts. You should just get to a point you don't have anything you are doing. You should be able to cancel meeting. Everybody say cancel meeting. Just cancel, cancel that other meeting. Say, oh God, if you don't come, I'll cancel it. I won't leave here until this message is true. Because a generation will also be retrained to know how, retrained to know how to stay, value the word. Value the word. Labor with the minister until things are pressed out. Let's say amen. amen. So that it took time to explain that you know, first aspect of the preaching. Because two things, if any man be in Christ, there is a new creation. Old things are passed away. The things that are old things are the old spirit and his manners and deceitful works. Ephesians 4 called it. Eh? They are passed away. In our spirit is passed away, but it's not passed away in our thinking. So that's the reason for Gadites. Everybody say that's the reason for Gadites. So when, you know, we go back to school, we just get ready. Pastor Tyro is coming. Pastor Dia, Pastor Goodness. Come and preach again and preach and preach. Even when you thought you've understood it, then they come from another angle and preach and preach. And you just be like, I thought I have understood it. I thought I have understood faith, hope, and charity. And they, because the Holy Ghost will show it from every side until they wipe out the old man. And the evidence that they've wiped out the old man is that you live godly. You detest the world. You, you, you overcome the world. You break free from the curse of this world. Your hope is adjusted. You are not pursuing the hope that every man is. It doesn't mean you won't go to work. You go to work. You go to school. You have a first class. You have a good wife, beautiful husband, nice children. But the hope running all men is not the hope running you. Because why? You've broken free from this presence. By learning the laws of life and peace that makes Christ. Let's say amen. amen. Then daddy went ahead, which is one that, you know, for many people, that yesterday night, I know this one, everybody is eating it like biscuits. You just be like, it's not even, pastor is not even saying it well, very well. There is the way pastor goodness said it the other time. You understand? <laughs> then, but this other one, this is the other, everybody is like, okay, you know, we have bread. Body, seed, tree, <laughs> cluster, <laughs> grape, <laughs> vine. <laughs> Can I tell you? It's also there in Genesis. It's also there in Genesis. Now, what daddy, by the grace, is I apostolic authority? You know, under our parents and pastors, having watched daddy long enough, there was a time, if you are like this, that means you have hope. What I want to say now, there was a time I used to suspect daddy. <laughs> Years ago. I would just be looking at him. You know, they, they, it shows on people's face when they are suspecting somebody. As a preacher, it shows on you. When you are preaching, you see some people's face, this guy is suspecting you. <laughs> he's careful of everything you are saying. It's like he's dodging his heart. <laughs> So I would just be wondering, how, I, how did you know? <laughs> I mean, this years ago, I would just be like, how, how are you so sure that we will, we will now put our life on this thing? But with time, I will grow and find out it is true. At least nobody is convincing me. I will grow and I will come and find out. Sometimes I remember one time, five years after he said one thing, five years after, 
I got there. Ah, I was not like, but this thing was said five years ago. So I now imagine where, where the person who said this thing five years ago, where is he now? <laughs> Where is it now? And what did this say? So I had to just at some point grow to trust. Paul told Timothy, he said, knowing of whom, you know, you are hearing these things, I paraphrase. So with time, you know, I've been proven and proven and I discover it's not him that is trying to prove it or mommy or our pastors. It's the spirit of God still showing it. Yes, it but as a matter of some back then, I used to come with a critical mind, a probing mind that wants to look for faults. Then the team will land with my analysis. It will land to be correct. So after some time, I just gave up. I just did what? I just believe. Let's say amen. amen. Now, the thing that they began to say that after you've learned Christ, then you now need to learn all things of God. Can you give it to us? You know, so, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. That's Christ. New. Eh? And, I say, and all things are of God. Paul is speaking. Who had reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and had given unto us the ministry of reconciliation. In another verse, he called it the word of reconciliation. Let's say amen. Now, Daddy began to say that those all things that are of God, that they are of two types. There is the body. Everybody say body. Because Daddy said, this, you know, left for me, I will not pass this route. I know where to put my leg. Ta, 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 ta. Before you know, let us give thanks to God, I've gone. <laughs> you know, but he said I should. So let me just explain, you know, some, you know. From patterns from Old Testament, it's obvious what that is saying. There are of two. There is the body, Daddy said, and there is the blood. Everybody say body. body. And everybody say blood. blood. Yeah, let's turn to Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2 is what you know. That day I start it over and over. That's one advantage when you stay around somebody and you love the minister. There's something about loving the minister. Not just for when he is there. It opens you up into the spirit of God on that minister. He said, he that receives a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. A prophet's reward is something very great. For you to get his reward you must have gotten the things that calls for the reward. So receiving a minister has many blessings attached to it. When Satan attacks our heart as per people who minister to us, anytime Satan attacks my heart, because he does so, if you say he hasn't attacked your heart concerning any of your pastors, then you are supernatural. He has attacked my heart. Sometimes you just be walking on the road confessing. I rebuke him. So just wind up the class. Nobody must hear your confession. <laughs> Because if they hear it, they may be worried. Eh? Because Satan wants to spoil pots and sand in your gary, and you drive long distance. Where are you going? I don't know. Just be driving. You could do road and just until you win that warfare and silence that voice or at least subjugate it to not being the loudest voice. Because if it does, what he wants to do, he wants to spoil many things, one of which is ability to understand. So for Adam, in Genesis chapter 2, from verse 5, Genesis 2 from verse 5, it said, And the plant of the field before it was in the earth, and the, and the herb of the field before it grew. For the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was not a man to till the ground. But there went up a mist from the earth, and watered the whole face of the ground. Can we read verse 7 together? One to go. Now, in the first thing was creation. The next thing was God-formed body. Now, ordinarily speaking, it's okay, God-formed body, God-formed body. But if you check very well, because that body that God formed is the same body 
though it has reduced in quality, sin had acted on it, De you know, death had acted upon it, hell and death is acting upon it, but it's still that same body that has gotten to us. Am I saying the truth? Eh? Now, that thing that God formed had two things in it. It has flesh and it also has blood. Is there anybody whose body here doesn't have blood? Is there anybody? Let me see. Yours is flesh and bone. Is there anybody? So what God did in Genesis chapter 1 was creation. In Genesis chapter 2, he went ahead and formed body. That's all scriptures. They say God formed out of the ground, the, from the dust of the ground, he formed man. Now what he formed is his physical body. Eh? And in that physical body, later when you check it, it's not just only a body, it also has blood in it. Through the breath of man's nostril, let's welcome Pastor Michael Gwe. <laughs> Pastor, you can sit here. You can sit here, sir. Pastor is ministering to us this morning. <laughs> Hallelujah. How many of you are happy to hear that? <laughs> so don't worry, I'll round up quickly. <laughs> you know, so in that Genesis 2, he formed man's body. Now that body he formed does not only have flesh, it also has blood. Let's say flesh and blood. So he formed body and the body has blood. And God breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Meaning God through breath put spirits, soul in Genesis chapter 1 that God had created. He through spirit put you understand? You know, true breath put the spirit and soul into the man's body. And man became a living soul. Now, in Genesis chapter 1, after he created them, he put blessing in them. And what's the blessing? The spirit. that the law of what they are as spirit. He put it in them. In Genesis chapter 2, a formed body, which consists of flesh and blood from the dust of the ground. Then he breathed. Now, through breath, God put spirit and soul. He said, you know, um, you know, for as the body without the spirit is dead. So when the body came alive, God must have put spirit inside. And through breath, God put spirit. But God also went ahead to much more than putting spirit. He put part of the loss of the body into the man. Because there are two laws that should run the body. I'm talking about, you know, loss of everlasting life. The loss of living and the loss of abiding. In the same manner that the soul trapped, first of all, the software of what the spirit is. The soul is also meant to trap the laws of what the body is. So God created spirit. Let's say amen. Just like we are born again in our spirit. But we have to learn the laws of the spirit with our soul. In that same vein, God also formed body. And inside that body, there is blood in that body. But the fact that you have body and you have blood does not mean you have the laws of how we should run. So God, when he breathed into his nostril, he put spirit and soul into the body. Then God also put part of the first law of the flesh into the man's soul. Now the laws, looking from the New Testament end, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23, being born again, not of corruptible seed, seed, you remember yesterday, there is seed and there is tree or fruit. Yeah? Now the soul is meant to also trap the knowledge of the body and the knowledge of the blood. Just like the soul had trapped the knowledge of the spirit. So the first thing the, law, the soul should trap is the knowledge of the spirit. Or in the New Testament, looking from the New Testament end, the knowledge of Christ. 
then the soul should also trap the knowledge of body. Then knowledge of blood. So when daddy is teaching everlasting life. You know, it began years ago. The Lord keeps shining light, shedding a little light here, a little light there. You understand? So after I'm true with Christ, I should now come and learn everlasting life. Or come and learn the knowledge of the seed, which is the incorruptible seed. The seed that lives and abides. So when Adam woke up, he didn't have living and abiding seed. He only had living seed. He was put in the garden so that he would complete his curriculum of living, you know, you know, everlasting life to get to abiding. And it's not ordinary that they put him into the garden of trees. Now, can I say this under our daddy? If he already was living, it means the seed of, of, of to abide is already in him. Yes, sir. Am I saying the truth? Yes. If he is already living, he became a living soul. It means the seed the, to abide is already in him. He just needs to complete the curriculum. Then God put him in a garden of trees. So that he will take of wine. So you see, God is wise. He didn't put him in a garden of herbs. They didn't put him in a garden of grasses. Eh? So he said, God breath into his nostrils, the breath of life. So meaning, you know, God woke him up with part of the incorruptible seed, or that he called it corn, having blossomed. Why would God do so? Why does God just make everything, let him be a living and abiding soul? Go ask God. <laughs> eh? What did I say? So he is living, meaning he should have obeyed and obeyed. And obeyed from being just a living soul to an abiding soul and also take of the tree. So the things we are now learning, everybody look at me. By the authority that the Lord has put upon his servant, our parents, and by instruction that I have to teach this morning. After we learn Christ, which ends in the holy place, we are now meant to come and learn two things. Body and blood. Two nights ago, daddy called the body the hack. So daddy said, when you see Adam, the way he's standing, that's a full hack. And inside of the hack, you find bread, which is in a manner, in a small measure, is a symbol of the hack that is fully blown. So, meaning when we learn, we eat the incorruptible seed. It's supposed to blow out. Now, our soul is meant to learn it. That is said, what Satan is done is that he is eating that thing out of our soul. You know, Paul said in 2 Corinthians, is it chapter 5? He said, we will receive our house, which is from heaven. So, when we are eating the incorruptible seed, we are actually eating our house. We are eating into the house. So the way the soul is, inside of the soul, Pastor Tilash, what God wants to make with the soul is that in with the soul, you should find spirit. In the soul, you should find body. With the soul, you should find blood. So the soul should be holding the complete man. So a man who is fully complete, is a man who in his soul you can find spirits. In his soul you can find body. In his soul you can find blood. So the whole program of salvation is to make sure that spirit, house, and blood are put inside of the soul. Let's say amen. Amen. So in Genesis 2, 7, it's also shown in a figure when God formed the body. Yeah? You know, it's cells that makes up the body. Am I saying the truth? Sex makes up tissues. Tissues makes up organs. Organs makes up systems. Then it's also cells that makes up blood, water, and cells. Red blood cells, 
White blood cells, blood platelets. I'm talking physically. But those things speak of spiritual realities. And those spiritual realities, God has, has them exemplified in the tabernacle. And they now want us to learn it. Meaning at the end of the day, what God wants to do is to build a full tabernacle inside our soul. In learning the incorruptible seed, by that they call it flesh. Jesus said, except a man eat my flesh. So Jesus asked what he calls his own flesh. He said, for as the children are partakers of what? Flesh and blood. Where did they partake it from? We head into something negative on the negative side. So the adversary also will not only... Satan has what is called the curse of this world, which is a negative Christ. He also is called the prince of the power of the air, which is a negative flesh and a negative blood. He has it in every one of us. Babylon is said to be drunk with, with blood. Now... Revelation 13, I found that very, very interesting. Some days ago when daddy was teaching. Revelation 13, I round up, I'm almost true. You know in Revelation chapter 13, they spoke about the beast. The beast is a person that ascended out of the sea. Can you give me the place where he talked about you know, his image? He has an image. So really, when they are forming the flesh, Pastor Taiwo, or the body, is the image of the Son of God on the positive side. So the preaching of the body or the preaching of the house, that he called the preaching the house, preaching the flesh, or preaching obedience. Though he were a son, Yet, lent ye obedience. That's chapter 5, verse 8. But from chapter 3, they began to compare Moses with him as one who built all things God. And what's that all things God? The house of God. Holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession. Who was, can you give it verse 2? Who was faithful to him? That appointed him as also Moses was faithful in all his house. For this man was counted worthy of more glory than Moses, inasmuch as he who had built the house had more honor. Everybody look at me. He is talking about Jesus being a builder of all things God. Say all things God. Second Corinthians 5. Verse 18. Second Corinthians 5, verse 18. Second Corinthians 5, verse 18. And all things are of God. Now, in Old Testament times, different people had built different houses. By house it means different acts. Noah built an ark. Am I saying the truth? Moses also built a big house, but he also built an ark. Ark really, really is a house on his own. Daddy quoted Revelation chapter 11, the last verse. He said, the tabernacle of the temple of the testimony in heaven was open. The most holy on his own is a house. So Jesus builds an house. That house is called the house of obedience. So when I finish Christ, I am meant to present myself for him to build me. And for him to build me, he has to craft an image. Now, Old Testament used allegories that may not look like it. But the Lord raised apostles in the New Testament of the Lamb, foundational apostles, who the Lord raised to teach, to lay it, and the Lord has raised his servant, our daddy, you understand, to see those things. So when I am, everlasting life is being preached, pastor, the first thing that they are preaching is house. Paul said, whose house are we if we hold fast? If we are not automatically his house. If we hold fast the confession of our faith, steadfastly unto the end. Because the house has the beginning of it. It has the end of it. And how does it begin? It begins with seed. 
And where that seat is being, has been given, inside that seat, there are two works. Living works. And abiding works. Or you can call them first works. And last works. Those are the things that makes for the house. When the house is built, you see an image. Everybody say image. So the image of the Son of God is the body of the Son of God. Imagine the body of the Son of God standing in your soul. So, so you, are, you carry, you're not just carrying Christ. You are now carrying the image of the Son of God. But that image needs to live. It needs to do what? If you leave, that is if you leave it at the image or the house. It will, not be, it will not move. Now, the image is the place of obedience. Meaning, you, they will, as they are revealing it, they will be telling you what to obey. Obedience at this level is at another level. It's like they want to kill you. And truly, truly, they want to kill you. Because they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. Meaning, the word of obedience is a word that will begin killing. You obey against the serpents that he taught us. Obey and obey and obey and obey Jesus himself. Though he were a son, yet lent he obedience through the things that he suffered. He, you know, uh, Revelation 13. Thank you, sir. I round up. Now, in previous verses, okay, can you give me verse 13? Verse 11. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb. And he spake as a dragon. And he exercised all the power of the first beast before him. And caused the earth and them that dwell therein to worship the beast whose deadly wound was healed. Verse 13. And doeth great wonder so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. Verse 14. And deceived them that dwell on the earth by means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast. Saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. Verse 15. Can we read together? Everybody wants to go. So there is image. And there is, to, you have power to give life to the image. So what's the image? It's the body. So a time will come on the earth. You know, we are still warring with this world. Daddy has said it many times. If you love this world, there is no way you will not love the kingdom of the beasts. If you are still struggling with this world, when the kingdom of the beast shows up, it will be overwhelming. He said, because power was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And what would he use? He will use image. If Daddy was giving an example of music. You know, so there is something in the music. You know, easy, hey, oh, oh. <laughs> I remember one of my friends, a pastor, I'm rounding up. He went to, to cut his hair years ago. And they were playing a song in the saloon. And he was, he just looked at them and said, what kind of song is this? What kind, you, you listen, do you know what you are listening to? He was blasting them. After Babin is there, he was going home carrying his clipper. He just found himself singing. Oriye, oh fuck, I see Oriye. He has sang it for some time. Not in his head. Then he now recalled. <laughs> so he now came among pastors. He was now sharing his experience. Another one now said there is one song he's been struggling with. That song is not leaving him. Pump champagne. <laughs> so it was a time for confession. You know why? There's something in those things. There's something. And that is a true, those things, Satan eats people's bodies. Right. Now, when he says his body, you may be healthy, but your body has been eaten. Yeah. And he doesn't eat it as in, no, he puts another one. Yeah. If you check this world, one thing, you know, the, uh, you know, this world does, there's a way he glorifies flesh. Flesh is dangerous at any level. 
It's dangerous at any level. So the, the kingdom of the beast, he has his image. Then the false prophet has power to give life. What God does with ministers of everlasting life is that they will be able to see the image of the Son of God. And they will be able to also bring life to that image. And what's life? That's blood. And that he called it vine. That he called it spirits. As per the ark, that's testament. The two testaments that are inside the ark, they are meant to animate the ark and make the ark alive. That one is called sprinkling of the blood. Second Peter, elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through sanctification of the Spirit, Christ. Unto obedience or unto the body and sanctification. That is the full curriculum of the tabernacle. A person who fully does that will call for crowns and will be ready for eternal life. Let's say amen. amen. So what daddy has been laboring is not something strange. It's not like maybe that daddy is just saying things that are no. It's things, just prophetic mannerisms. As a father, sometimes having ministered, so you have his children, his little, little boys in third generation who can come and say, This is what our daddy is actually saying. He's not saying, he's not drunk. Eh? As it's where you may think naturally, he's drunk on God, he's drunk on everlasting life. And he's saying those things which we, as your elder brothers, are coming to say, Look, see it from this view and see it as something you need to learn and run with. So that in our soul, there will be a new creature. In our soul, there will be the image. will be in the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person. That image will be in us and the image should live. It should talk as a result of sprinkling. How many of us are blessed this afternoon or this morning? Can we give thanks to God in the name of Jesus? I want us to bless God. Makata baraka tela maraba katela baraka sata menzaka dala baraka tela banaka tota parata jama ka papa yega vara pakatela maraga tela masado labana manka tela paraka tela baranda la bakatela. Can we pray that Lord increase my capacity for Your Word? Pray, pray that prayer. Believe that that prayer will be answered right now. Increase my capacity. Increase my capacity for your word. Increase my capacity for your word. Manda katela barakatela bashata. We receive capacity. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Can we thank God for the word? I want us to thank Jesus. Everybody say, thank you, Jesus, for helping your servant. Open your mouth. Thank, thank, thank Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. How many of us were blessed? How many of us were thoroughly blessed? Hallelujah. How many of us understood what pastor said? It's, it's, as in it's coming, you know, it's getting better and better, Right? Right? Amen. Can we say thank you, Pastor? Can we say we love you, Pastor? How many of you know that these things are things that the first century saints knew? That's the saints that, you know, um, were in Bible days. You know, when you read your Bible, do you believe that they were talking to some people? Uh, now, I want you to imagine the, the early church. The early church that Paul, John was ministering to. Do you think they were teaching motivation? Motivational teachings. What, what, what do you think Paul was saying all night? That Itikos died. And they didn't stop the meeting. They continued teaching. Now what do you think Paul was telling them? Now do you believe Paul knows faith, hope, charity? I mean, is it not Paul that wrote it in Corinth? You know, sometimes when we think, we feel... Did Paul really teach this? Did John really teach bread, wine? I can assure you, everything that our daddy is teaching, John taught it in a meeting. Paul taught it in a meeting. Ark. Because these words, they wrote it. 
You know, sometimes we feel it's not Bible. We feel it's the word of a particular ministry. You know? When I, I talk, ah, charity is in the Bible. That as in the word, charity. Ark, blood, bread. They are not, they are strange now because Satan actually gave a massive blow, you know, to the body of Christ. So God is restituting a whole lot of things, even our lingua. Even our lingua. God is restoring Bible language. Everybody say Bible language. Satan actually wants to take away Bible language. So sometimes Satan brings some, some translation. There are some translation that it is Satan that brought it out. To erode Bible language. Just imagine the translation and say you go collect. So, you know, it does evil. Because that translation is using lingua that Satan, you know, infiltrated the world with. With, you know, in your mind, you say, oh, we want to relate with the, with the Gen Z, with the young people. But actually, it is Satan actually lowering the standard of God. Now, we all are actually to go up to where God is. So, you see these words, covenant, blood, bread, they are not new. They have been there. We are just going back to dig the wells that our father, Paul, John, Jude, taught the early church. When we get to the world to come, they are words that they use. It's not strange. Some people, when they say, ark, blood, they'll be like, ark, is there, which ark? It'll be like, which school did you go to while you were on earth? I mean, school, now I'm talking about church. Because it be like, they did not, we did not know this. Are you following me? Praise God. Hallelujah. So God is restoring capacity to the church. God is restoring word capacity. Everybody say word capacity. When pastor said that, it really touched me that our, our generation has become so weak that we don't want to stay with the word. We would rather sing. We would rather dance. We would rather attend concerts. We would rather pray. You know, it's easy to pray for five hours than to hear word for five hours. Those people who are doing prayer ton, 12 hours prayer ton, let them sit down for 12 hours word at on. They will sleep. They will stand up and get away. Are you following me? Because to stay sitting down word for 12 hours takes a lot of capacity. So capacity. And that's what God wants to restore. Hallelujah. And we are that generation that will not be we will not be tired of words. See, I will not be tired of word. Not any word, but the word of, of scripture, of the Bible, of the apostles, the foundation of the apostles. Amen. And we thank God for our daddy. How many of us love daddy Oyegoke? His doggedness, his passion, his, his unwavering. As in, if not for daddy, in our, in our lives, in our generation, we will not get to where we are right now. You know, you have to be stubborn to get to this. You know, if, if someone like me would have, would just tabernacle in a, in just charity. We will even get to charity faster. Just one small light. You know, you know, just to see light in scripture is tipsy. And you feel that this is all. Let me just build my whole life on this place. But, but to forget those things that are behind and to keep pushing and pushing and pushing, it means that Jesus is really driving God's servant. Praise God. Now, what do you think that daddy will be teaching in the next 10 years? You know, there's a way daddy is teaching right now. You just feel that this is everything. What else again do we want to learn? I don't know if you get me. Now, now there was something daddy was teaching 10 years ago. At that time, we felt that this is everything. Are you following me? Now, I want you to imagine what we'll be saying now. Your mind cannot phantom what we'll be saying right now because to you, we've already got into eternal life. We are just but I can assure you that there are many things in this Bible that we will not know completely until we get to the world to come. God will only give us everything that we need for him to reward us so that we will now continue knowing him and knowing him. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So let's brace up for impact. Because there are still many, 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 many things to learn. Praise God. 
Do you know that there was something um, Paul said concerning the mercy seat? He said, of, of which we cannot say now particularly. <laughs> Praise God. And God wants a generation to learn all of them. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Um, um, you know, that, Daddy will not be ministering this morning. He called and he says he wants to blast us tonight. So he wants to rest so he can come with full force. So tonight is going to be bloody. Everybody say bloody. I mean, in the real literal sense, bloody. It's going to be bready and it's going to be bloody. Amen. But we have our pastor, Pastor Michael Gwoye. Daddy said Pastor Mike should... Praise God. Daddy said Pastor Mike should bless us. You know, these things, we have to hear it from different... You know, different sides, different expression of Jesus. Praise God. There's the side, there's the expression of Jesus in our pastor, Pastor Tokwe Falai. How many of us were blessed by pastor? Amen. And there's the expression of Jesus in our pastor, Pastor Mike Ogunye. You know one expression I know about Pastor Mike Ogunye? Pastor Mike is very sweet. It's like you're drinking ice cream. Don't worry, you'll just be taking ice cream right now as you are. Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. How many of you are happy that Pastor Mike will be ministering to us? Amen. I'm sure everybody here is happy because you are going to understand. Amen. With a good God bless you, let's stand up and receive the ministry of Pastor Mike Ogoye. I want you to clap like you're excited. Amen. Please, let's sit down. <coughs> Hallelujah. Um, I didn't know I would be doing this. I was on my way somewhere this morning um, when daddy called that I should just turn back, suspend what I was going to do, and that I'll be ministering here today. So initially, I thought maybe I was going to be giving a charge before daddy comes up. So only for me to get here, and then I didn't see the Ford. Pastor was ministering. Then I came in, sat down, and Pastor Leke told me that um, uh, Daddy wouldn't be coming and all of that. So I'm saying all of this so that you can pray for me. Sure, you understand? I need prayers <laughs> as I am like this. Amen. Um, how many of us have been blessed so far? GBS 2024 has been a great success. And um, a whole lot has happened to us, much more than what our minds can even understand. Let's say amen. amen. And, um, and we are ready for the blasting that will be taking place tonight by the mercies of God. Amen. So I want to appreciate, um, I want to appreciate uh, God for the privilege I have to stand before you um, to bring God's word again. Um, I, GBS platform for me is a very high platform. You know, it's not like our normal, regular campus Gadite meeting. So, um, but I'm really trusting God that God will help me today. Um, I want to, us to appreciate all our pastors in the house. Um, Pastor Leke Omilano, that's our daddy, you know, in Gadite. Pastor, thank you so much. God bless you. Pastor, I love you so much. As in, you are so dear to me and I have great respect for you. Um, Pastor Leke, Pastor Tilash, Pastor AK, Pastor Telema is currently not on seat, Papi Shags, Pastor Taiwo Ajani, Pastor Dia. There's one video, one teaching you did that is flying everywhere right now. You know, I was like, wow, Pastor Dia is fire. Pastor, thank you so much. I want to appreciate everyone, everyone, thank you. God bless you in the name of Jesus. Um, we love you, we believe in what you are doing, and we always pray for you, and we are part of you, we are together, sure you understand, uh, we are together going towards the same goal. I want to appreciate everyone, I want to appreciate Pastor Charles, Pastor, thank you so much sir. Um, Pastor Charles is a man of God, many of you don't know him, I remember the first time daddy came to our school, 2006, I was in 300 level, that was the first time I saw him, you know, then. Uh, Pastor, thank you so much for being seated. I want to appreciate everyone. Um, 
everyone who took leave did something, you know, to just ensure that they are here, especially those ones who are no longer students who want to be a uh, part of the blessing of God on this platform. Uh, thank you so much for being seated. I want to appreciate our online audience, and I want to appreciate our pastor, Pastor Tokpe Falai. Can we jam our hands together for pastor? <clears throat> Honestly, Pastor, I wish I was the first person who came up. Then you now come, will come to come and straighten all the rough edges, you know, for me. So coming up after you is not something. I was just thinking, what do I want to say? And truly, that's how I feel. What do I, I'm not saying it to be, to show that I'm humble. What do I really want to say? Pastor is my teacher on and off the pulpit. Um, Pastor has been a great blessing to me from the first day I set my eyes on him. Um, thank you so much, Pastor. Pastor has been a blessing to me in ways I cannot even explain. You know, thank you so much, sir, for all that you have been to me and to all my brothers, you know, every one of us. Thank you, Pastor. God will preserve you for us for many, many, many more years in the name of Jesus. And I want to appreciate, I want us to appreciate our daddy, um, Pastor Emeka Eguchuku. That's our daddy, you know, um, in Gadites. Um, we may not know what God has used Pastor to do for us, you know. Um, recently, I was going somewhere with my wife, and we got talking about, I think it was Pastor, it was our pastor, Pastor T, who said it two nights ago, that Unilag is not the first school that will encounter the word of righteousness. And it's true. Um, in fact, 2006 Believers Convention took place in Unilag. And it was only one Unilag student that attended. You know, that was 2006 Believers Convention. Um, there have been schools that this message has got into. And it prospered, at least, for the time that it was there. But one thing, you know, sitting down looking at a whole lot of, you know, some of my friends that we all entered, had the word at the same time, latched onto it, believed in the message at the same time. You know, looking back at it, looking back at every one of them, I was just with my wife some days ago. And um, one thing that I felt was um, probably responsible for why that harvest was lost is because we didn't have pastors. You know, um, a whole lot went through issues, different kinds of contradictions. There was nobody to walk them through it, you know. So different kinds of people like that, you know. Like Daddy was saying somewhere, he said, many pastor talkers, you know, or people that could have become like that, who had great potentials. Somehow, that harvest got attacked by the devil. And a whole lot of them, if you come around them right now and they speak to you for two hours, you will not want to hear the message again. So Satan succeeded somehow in poisoning them. But we thank God for the gift in God's servant, Pastor Emekayo Guchuku. The Lord raised him to preserve this harvest, you know. And Pastor is a blessing in the world to come. One of the things we will still thank Jesus for is the gift of a man like Pastor Emekayo Guchuku. Um, pastor is a pastor like no other pastor. We've met pastors. I got born again when I was 10, and I've been interacting with ministers at different levels. I've not seen a pastor like Pastor. Emeka Eguchuku is a pastor who does ministry without attachment, you know. And a uh, pastor will tell you that until you have seen something higher than ministry, you cannot do ministry well, you know. Now, you won't hear that from everybody. A whole lot of pastors, the ministry they are doing is their life, you know. And that's the reason why pastor is pure, pastor is holy, is a worthy example to follow. Um, all the time we were in school, we didn't know anything about submission to spiritual authority, but we saw it exemplified in a man, you know. He's our pastor, and I really want to appreciate God for him. Please, can we appreciate um, God's servant, Pastor Maker, again? Pastor, we love you. Pastor, I'm your boy forever, and I love you so much. And um, the Lord will preserve you for us for many more years. And of course, as while well, we're appreciating Pastor, we're appreciating Mommy also. You know, there are some devils, Mommy Lillian has used prayers to chase away. You know, some wars that you don't have to fight. Because when you were snoring, somebody was fighting. You know, thank God for mommy. Um, I really want to appreciate them. And I want us to appreciate God for our daddy. That's our daddy daddy. That's how we describe him. That's the daddy of our daddy. So when you see Pastor Maker, of course, 
you know, the Bible says that um, um, every son looks like the father she. Uh, so, you know, where pastor actually got all those qualities that he exemplifies is from daddy. That's our daddy, daddy, daddy Kayode Oyegoke. Um, I want us to, you know, just, just rise up and just appreciate um, our daddy. I want us to clap our hands. Please, every one of us, I want us to clap our hands. Um, amen. So, ah, I don't know. Anytime I want to talk about daddy, I don't have words, you know, to use to talk about daddy. Um, it's not easy to do what daddy is doing. And it's not easy to be daddy, you know. Um, for somebody to allow God hijack him, and then, I don't know how I can describe it. If I want to start talking, I can start crying, <laughs> you know. But I just, you know, want our hearts to be full of gratitude for the vessel that God raised for us. Daddy has gone through a lot of things. And I want to say that as he was going through those things, God had you and me in mind. You know, when God was raising him, God had us in mind. Now, think of what your life will have been like if not for this message. Many of us, including me, will have spoiled. I am very sure I will have decayed. I will have been stinking. Sure, you understand. But I might still have been alive. And it will look as if I'm doing well in the natural you know, so I really want um, us to appreciate God for our daddy. Daddy, and daddy, like Pastor, um, our daddy, Pastor Tokwe said, daddy is a laborer. Daddy is a relentless laborer. And those are part of the marks of an apostle. In much patience. Patience is ability to keep doing the same thing, regardless of contradicting situations. Now, that's patience. It's a very strong show of strength. So the first sign of an apostle is not ability to raise the dead. It's ability to stay on doctrine, regardless of contradictions that come through several seasons of life. Daddy has weathered a lot of storms. And when I'm talking about daddy, I'm not just talking about daddy alone now. I'm also talking about mommy. Hell no, you go, okay. Mommy is our mommy. How many of us know that? How many of us, how many of us are glad for mommy, Helen? Mommy has an unusual grace to interpret daddy. Everything daddy has taught, the way to it is mommy. That's just it. Sure, you understand. So you want to understand everything that is teaching, just listen to mommy. Mommy will show you the pathway to embodying the life. You know, and it's a great blessing. You can't mimic mommy. Mommy has her ways. As in, mommy is a building of God that God has raised for every one of us in our generation. And the Lord will preserve them for us for many, many more years. Honestly speaking, if there is no Reverend Kayode Oyegoke, and I am saying this without any apology, if there is no Daddy Kayode Oyegoke, if there is no Mommy Helen Oyegoke, the body of Christ will be stranded. Forget about people who look like they are doing ministry well. Many people are doing ministry without direction. You know, so everything that God is doing, word of righteousness, God is actually raising us. It's just like, we are just like J Joseph that is being sent ahead to preserve the life of his brethren. Do we understand? So, um, God has raised daddy for us. God has raised mommy for us. And I want us in our hearts to be grateful for the gift of men like that. You know, they have raised a lot of men, raised many of our pastors, you know, and are raising a whole lot of children all over the world. You know, I was listening to Pastor Jeff recently, and I'm like, wow, that's just another daddy. <laughs> you know, smaller version. So, the same spirit that is on daddy is what we have on all our pastors. And if this message has blessed you in any way, it's because a man obeyed God. You know, and um, I pray that the Lord will keep them for us. Um, I can't imagine, I can't imagine daddy not being with us. I can't imagine. Because we still have many, many things to uncover inside this thing. A whole lot. In fact, where we are is a more dangerous ground. You know, we need more mercy. Sure, you understand. As we are getting very close to the end, we need, we need a lot of mercy. And part of the mercy that God will give to us in our generation is preserving daddy and mommy for us. Let's say amen. amen. The Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I hope I've appreciated everybody. Um, I want to appreciate the workforce. Can we put our hands together for them, please? Um, our brother, Pastor Landry Awoshika, who helps us in singing and all the people with them. Thank you so much for the blessings you have been. Um, God will keep you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm sorry. I'm just dragging it like this because God will help me. I hope you are praying for me.
can we just bow our heads for prayer? Father, we give you all the glory and thanks. Thank you for GBS. Thank you for what you've been doing. Um, thank you for this morning. Thank you for our pastor, Pastor Tope Falai. Thank you for the awesome blessing um, that you brought to us. Accept our thanks in the name of Jesus. Help me to help my brethren today. Help me to um, help my brothers and sisters. Help me to bring clarity and understanding. Um, and as I speak, help me to also understand more. In the name of Jesus. Um, I pray that the faith that your servant has, that made him say I should minister today, you will honor it. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Please, let's have our seat in God's presence. Hallelujah. set your heart, yea, even for to receive this deal. Receive this deal. For you must carry the blessing. You must carry the blessing. See the Spirit.
of speaking. Yet you see, even is to cause your heart even to turn. Yet to cause your heart to turn. Yet you see, even I want to give you even the right heart. I want to give you the right heart. The right heart for the blessing. The right heart for the blessing. So you see, even I begin to place demands, even by reason of my speaking, even speaking to you, even speaking to you, even speaking to you, yet to give you even the right heart, even the right heart state, even the right heart culture. Yet you see, even I minister wisdom to you, even wisdom, even wisdom, even wisdom, even wisdom. Even wisdom, even wisdom for to give you the right heart. Even wisdom for to give you the right judgment. Even wisdom for to give you the right discernment. Even for to receive the blessing. Receive the blessing. Receive the blessing. Receive the blessing. Here you see, even I give authority. Even I give authority. Even to my servant. I give authority even to my servant. Even for to speak and for to cause even the hearts of many to turn. Even to turn for to receive the blessing. For to receive the blessing. See at the spirit. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Okay. Hallelujah. Amen. We receive that word in the name of Jesus. Okay. Um, 2 Timothy chapter 1. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. Um, I'm not going to be saying anything different from what our daddy, Pastor Tope, has said. I think I'm just going to be saying the same thing, but probably from another angle, like Pastor Leke described. 2 Timothy chapter 1, from verses 1 to 2. If we are there, can we say amen? amen? If we are there, can we say amen? amen. All right. Oh, Second Timothy chapter 1, from verses 1 to 2. Can we all read together? One to go. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, according to the promise of life, which is in Christ Jesus. Verse 2. To Timothy, my dearly beloved son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. Let's say amen. amen. So Paul said, Paul introducing himself in this place said, called himself an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God. According to the promise of life which is in Christ Jesus. Let's say the promise of life. So that means the promise of God for man is nothing else but life. So what God promised us in Christ Jesus is not any other thing apart from life. Actually, when man was created, man was created to own nothing apart from life. The first thing God gave to Adam was life. You know, the Bible says, like when pastor was ministering, pastor said, God breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Before Adam had a wife, he had life. Before Adam had a job, he had life. Show we are following me. So what God wants to give to man actually is life. The interaction of God or the basis of God's interaction with man is life. So if they take away that life, God has no basis for fellowship. So the basis on which God was interacting with man in, from the very beginning was life. Let's say amen. amen. So um, God... Thank you, sir. God, the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. So this man already was created in Genesis chapter 1 as our pastor already explained to us. He was created in Genesis 1, 27, you know, with his spirit and his soul together. Then in Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, his body was formed and then life was given to this man. So the life that was given to this man is what helped him or what positioned him to exercise the dominion that God spoke about in Genesis 1.28. Let's say amen. amen. So what God gave to Adam first was life. Now, God gave Adam life. Then God now planted him in the garden of Eden in front of a tree of life. Which means that the idea of God or the plan of God for Adam is that it will move from life to life. 
So the life that Adam had already in his soul was not enough. Now, one of the things we need to, um, for us to understand everything that God is doing with us and God is doing with his servant or doing with us through his servant, we need to first understand that that man, that first man, Adam, was not a finished product. You know, my Sunday school child mind, I believed that man was perfect. Everything was okay with man. Then suddenly, one apple caused wahala. Sure you understand. And then, you know, because um, according to that, my small mind, if you find yourself in a place where there is no problem with food, there is no problem with drink, there is no problem with shelter, there is no problem with clothing, then what is the need to improve your life? Now, that's a Gentile sense. That's how Gentiles think. That's why when Paul was talking about the kingdom, he first defined, because he was talking to Gentiles, he first told them what the kingdom is not. Because the natural reasoning of every Gentile will go towards food and drink. So he now said, for the kingdom of God is not food and drink. It's not meat and drink, but it is righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Let's say amen. So the intention of God for creating man or for creating Adam was that Adam will graduate into the kind of life that God himself has. Now, let me just say something. I won't go to uh, the place, but let me just you know, say something just like a little background. Now, Genesis chapter 1 told us the history of God's creation. God created the heaven and the earth, Genesis 1-1. And then beginning from verse 3, God began to now furnish the earth. Verse 3 was not the creation of the earth. Verse 3 was the beginning of God making the earth he had created in verse 1 habitable for life. So God created life at different levels. So we had plant life on earth. We had animal life on earth, you know. And one of the laws that God put inside those lives, you know, that existed, those kinds of life. In the sea, there was aquatic life. We had fishes, you know, and then God gave them a permission or God gave them a right to all reproduce after their kind. Animals also had a right and, a, you know, they, they were also given permission to reproduce after their own kind. Let's say amen. amen. Now, man also, you know, was planted in the garden of Eden. But you observe something. Somebody was telling me something some days ago and the person was like, you know, that, I, that he felt like the law of reproduction was something that came up after man fell. I don't know how many of us who have, must have had some teachers, you know, who have taught those things. I said, no. I said, no. It, was, it has always been part of the original plan. But man was supposed to have eaten from the tree of life before embarking on that journey. So imagine Adam eating of the tree of life, Eve eating of the tree of life, and then they now begin to reproduce. So that means that man was not supposed to reproduce until he had been reproduced by God. So in other words, so that means animals had their kinds, plants had their kinds, but God does not have his own kind. So God wanting to now produce his own kind was why he planted a garden eastward in Eden. And inside that garden, he put the baby he wanted to begat. And that person he put in the, in the garden that he wanted to be God was actually Adam. Let's say amen. amen. So let me, let's go to Genesis chapter 5. I just want to draw something that I will continue that, um, I will continue in that line of thought. Genesis chapter 5. Thank you. Um, Genesis chapter 5, 1 and 2. Can we read it together? One, two, go. This is the book of the generations of Adam. Uh -huh. In the day that God created man, in the likeness of God made he him. Verse 2. Male and female created them and blessed them and called their name Adam in the day when they were created. Verse 3. And Adam lived 130 years and begat a son in his own likeness after his image and called his name. So now this place, this place, verse 3, is the first place where after Genesis 1.26 we will be seeing image and likeness coming together. Again, Genesis 1.26 is the first place where we'll find image and likeness coming together. Let us make man in our own image after our likeness, right? So this place is the next place where you are going to be finding it. And I'm not very sure we have it like this again in, throughout the entire Bible. 
This is the only place where you will find image and likeness coming together. And the nature of the bet that this person experienced, they call it begat. So, if God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness, then that means it's because he actually wanted to beget man. And that was the reason he planted that garden eastward in Eden and he put Adam inside it. Are we following what I'm saying? So, God created man. Why? Because God wanted to reproduce species after his own kind. Because he actually wanted to begat them. He actually wants to beget man. So if he be succeeds in doing it with the first man and his wife, he has succeeded with the generations they will produce. Are we following me? Are we following me? God will help us in Jesus' name. So I remember explaining somewhere, and I was talking about, you know, sometimes you see birds. You know, when birds want to lay their eggs, they make nests. And the kind of things they used to make nests, are plants from different places. They just pull something here, pull something here, pull everything, and then pull it together, and then they will make, lay their eggs, right? The Garden of Eden was just like that. So the Garden of Eden was like God's nest. And then he actually wanted to be God inside that place. But it looked as if when God said, let us make man, somebody else also said, let us make man. Yeah. And that other person who said, let us make man, was actually Lucifer, who had become Satan. So, when man partook of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, he began another journey towards another image and likeness. Different from the image and likeness that God had in mind for man. Are we following what I'm saying? All right. So, I'm trusting God to really, you know, um, not go too high so that we would really understand. Because that's the reason why, you know, daddy said we should minister. So that we we'll bring understanding. So, now, what makes God God is life. God is life. God is life eternal. God has life everlasting. Are we together? So God is life eternal. God also has life everlasting. Jesus said, as the father has life in himself. So what comes together to form the father actually uh, is life. So matters of life came together to form that being called the father. Now, God wanting to begat means that man that is big or he has begotten will have life just as he has it. It's not just that the man will have life, but he will have it just as he has it. He said, as the father has life in himself, so has the son has life. So the son has life just as the father has it. Now, that is the lot of a begotten son. And that was exactly what was in God's mind, you know, when he created man and put him in the garden of Eden. Let's say amen. amen. Now, but Adam had life. What kind of life did Adam have? Adam had an everlasting life of the earth. Do we understand? Adam had an everlasting life of the earth. And in Genesis 1.1, the Bible talks to us about creation, right? There, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. So heaven is heaved. That's another world of existence that is higher than the earth. And that world of existence that is higher than the earth has beings living there that are all higher than man. Because the Bible says man was made a little lower than the angels. Are we together? Now, sometimes we meet some preachers who will tell you that man was not made a little lower than the angels. That man was made a little lower than God. It's not so. The gap between God and man is not lower. It's not little. The gap between God and man is far. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. That doesn't look like a gap that heavens can even close. You know, because it says as the heavens are higher. So man, the difference between man and God is not small. The difference between man and God is the difference between a very low creature and the creator. So that's very wide. So man was actually made a little lower than the angels. Are we together? All right. So all the angels, you know, we've been taught... You know, when that was ministering yesterday and I was saying something, I was just like, oh, these people know these things. As uh, the pastors have taught them. Sure, you understand. So in the heavens, we have three angels. You know, three classes of angels. First heaven, second heavenly angels. Then we have the third heavenly angels. And the first heavenly angels, second heavenly angels, third heavenly angels were all higher, you know, than Adam. In make. Are we together? In make, and that's the only that's the reason why they were put in that realm of existence. Shall we understand? It's called heaven because it's higher. 
It's called heaven because it's a plane that is higher than the plane of the earth where man was planted. Let's say amen. amen. Okay, is that clear? All right. So, but Adam was, had an everlasting life of the earth. And by that everlasting life of the earth, uh, Adam could control or exercise dominion over every life kind on earth that was lower than Adam's stature. So, Adam could name animals. Adam could tend the garden. Adam could do a whole lot of things. Are we together? Now, that's Adam exercising dominion because the kind of life Adam had was actually higher than the kinds of life that, you know, all the other beings sharing the earth with him had. Are we together? But that life was not enough because if you check the dominion equivalent of that life, it was over fishes, over cattle, over creeping things, over things that were flying. Are we understanding? And I was telling somebody sometime, I said, if they give you that to plan, are we together? And you see this thing that we are saying. Sometimes, we, we, I'm not sure there's ever any time we have preached that we didn't go back to Garden of Eden. Do you understand? Because if you understand the beginning, you will understand the gospel. So, John chapter 10, verse 10. Let's go to John 10, 10. John chapter 10, verse 10. Jesus said, the thief commit not but for to steal to kill and to destroy. Let's say the thief. So it says, the thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. He now said, I am come, that they might have what? Uh -huh. And that they might have it more abundantly. Let's say the thief. How many of us have seen thieves before? Maybe some of us at some point in our life, we've been thieves. Are you understanding? <laughs> sure you understand. <laughs> so you know that there is difference between a thief and a robber, right? Uh, a robber comes armed. So if you just hear somebody, hey, ole, 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 and then they search the guy and they find one dagger inside that guy's pocket. That's not a thief, that's a robber. A robber usually, they call them armed robbers. So they arm themselves with weapons to rob you of your valuables. So actually, robbers are cowards. Yes. Thieves are bolder. When you catch a thief, you will wonder if you caught the correct person. Yes. Because by the time you are finished catching them, you will search them and you won't find anything on them. In fact, a thief will steal from you and join you to look for what he stole. That's a thief. And we have many of them in Lagos. Let's say amen. <laughs> I remember one uh, story like that I was reading online. And then somebody said, um, he stayed in Lagos for six months. After staying in Lagos for six months, he left. You know, he said, I can't cope. So they now said, which experience is it that actually made you decide to leave Lagos? So he now narrated one day. He said, we're just in front of his house. And that was how, no, I think we're just going somewhere. That's how one guy just approached him and just prostrated in front of him. He said, well, thank you. Thank you for the other day. And he was looking at the guy like, I don't know you. Which day? He said, ah, ah, that day that they were going to beat me. Those guys were going to kill me. You had one that rescued me. Ah, you have forgotten my face. You know, so, and then some people were already beginning to look. So the guy said, to save himself of embarrassment, he just played along. And the guy now looked at him and said, so you too. Make sure that you're a good child. Don't be causing trouble anywhere. The guy said, okay, thank you very much. And then the guy left. Two minutes after I left the guy, his phone had disappeared. <laughs> At what point the guy put his hand inside his pockets to bring that phone, he did not know. Now that's a thief. <laughs> Pastor said, a gifted one. Do you understand? Now that's a thief. Let's say thief. The greatest exploits of thieves are done in silence. Everything is going to look normal, but something had gone wrong. So Jesus now called the devil the thief. So this the thief is the father of all thieves. Are we understanding? In fact, they didn't call him a thief. They called him the thief. But unfortunately, this thief does not steal phones. This one does not steal money. Because thieves steal what they consider valuable. Shall we understand? So the one that steals phones is because he considers phones valuable. Another person doesn't consider phones valuable will see it and decide to pick something else. Shall we understand? But this thief has what he considers valuable. His own valuable is not your car. His own valuable is not even your resort. Shall you understand? You know the funny thing? Satan, he does not laugh when you fail. He's not there. When you are sick and you are at the point of dying, 
he doesn't rejoice. That's not his testimony. Do you know why? Because somebody with sickness in his body defeated him. That man was Job. Do you understand? So the testimony is not in the fact that, ah, this guy. No, 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 no. Because Satan knows that even when you cannot talk, he can still lose. Now, so what he considers valuable is not you not being able to walk. That's not his valuable. Those are not the kinds of things that he steals. Are we together? So what exactly is this thief interested in? He said he comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Now, what he is interested in is what Jesus came to supply. He said, I am come that they might have life. So what this thief considers valuable is life. So you understand why he was in the garden of Eden. So in the garden of Eden, the thief was also there. Are we understanding? There was a tree that was supposed to have, make man have life more abundantly. Let's say amen. But the thief also comes. And Jesus said he does not come. Do we understand? The thief comes not. He doesn't waste his coming. When he's coming, he's purposeful behind, there's purpose behind it. So if he shows up to greet you, it is because in the greeting, are we getting it? He will steal, he will kill, and he will destroy. This guy is the most serious-minded man on earth. He doesn't waste, he doesn't know how to while away time. The Bible says that woe to the earth because he knows his time is short. So he means business. So when he showed up in the garden of Eden, he has one thing he wanted to do. And what did he do? He, he stole. <laughs> when God told Adam, in the day you eat of this tree, you shall surely die. What does it mean to die? To lose life. So imagine somebody said, they said there was an accident somewhere that all the people on board lost their lives. You are now asking if the driver survived. Do you understand what I'm saying? As in they will just look at you and ask you that, is it English that you don't understand? Or what exactly is the nature of your problem? Do you get it? For somebody to have lost life means the person died. So he succeeded in the garden of Eden to steal. And like I told us, like that man that that guy greeted, having prostrated, you know, the man was just going normally, but something valuable had gotten missing. So at exactly what point Adam lost life, even Adam might not have known. He just discovered that strange thoughts began to visit him. Are we together? So, um, so now that project of God, giving man life and graduating man from life to life until man eventually has God's own kind of life, you know, got um, suspended from that time. So, um, man inherited another kind of life. Or let me say it this way. Man became born. Adam became born. You know, um, the first Adam, Adam was created by God, but he wasn't given birth to. He didn't have a father. Are we together? But when he partook of that seed, you know, that tree in the Garden of Eden, he actually experienced a birth. You know, I told us that God actually wanted to be God's man, right? So, but there was somebody who got to that particular place first and now begot Adam's spirit. He gave birth to Adam's spirit. So, Adam became born. He had a father and that father was not God. So, Adam died in his spirit. Are we following me? So, Adam died in his spirit. And... Um, when you get the spirit and you have not gotten the soul, you have not fully gotten the man. Yes, sir. So Satan began to walk at the soul. He began to walk on the soul. So the Bible says, give me Genesis chapter 3 verse 9. As in God really helped me today. I hope you are understanding what I'm teaching. Sha. Genesis chapter 3. Okay, no, verse 7. Give me Genesis chapter 3 verse 7. Okay, so Genesis chapter 3 verse 7. Can we read it together? One, two, go. And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sealed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. So the eyes of them both were opened. This didn't mean that, or this doesn't mean that they were going about the Garden of Eden with their eyes closed. Because if their eyes had been closed, they would not have seen the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The woman would not have seen it. So these eyes that were opened were another set of eyes. Um, our daddy, Pastor Tope, taught us about spirit, soul, and body. So, now, the same way your body is a man, your soul is also a man. The same way your body has eyes, your soul also has eyes. 
And the eyes of your soul is what is called understanding. Let's say understanding. And that's why somebody will explain something to you and you'll be like, oh, wow, okay, I see. Now, what you are seeing is not with these eyes. You are seeing with the eyes of your understanding. Or let me say the eyes of your soul. Are we together? Now, this is very important. And this is very crucial. You know why this is very crucial? The eyes of them both were opened. That means understanding visited them. Now, the spirit had died, but the soul still had life. Now, um, the work of the soul, or let me say part of the work of the soul, is to give expression to the life that is in the spirit. There is no spirit without a soul. You can never see a spirit like this. And then you now see the soul of the spirit like this. No. The soul, like uh, you know, I was listening to pastor. Pastor spoke about when a person dies. It's not two people that lives. It's one person that lives. You see that one person that lives is the spirit with his soul. Now, the soul is the functional part of that spirit. So when you see a spirit and the spirit smiles, <laughs> the soul is the one that projected the smile. So when you see a spirit and then the spirit is sad, sure you understand, the soul. God said, if any man draws back, my soul will have no pleasure in him. So the soul is the functional part of that spirit. So spirits express themselves through the souls. Do we understand? And then the souls express themselves through bodies. So now, um, the, the valve that connects the spirit and the soul is actually called understanding. Wow. So that means something can be in the spirit and that thing may not be in the soul. Yes, Do we understand what I'm saying? Something can be in the spirit and then that thing may not be in the soul. Why? Because the understanding of what is in the spirit is not present inside the soul. Understanding is a soul commodity. Yes, soul trades in understanding. So, um, okay, let me, let me um, explain it this way. Genesis chapter 1, spirit was created. Genesis chapter 1, um, um, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he, male and female created he them. Then, um, Genesis 20, verse 1, uh, chapter 1, verse 28. And God blessed them and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion. Now you see this word dominion means that soul was part of what God created in Genesis chapter 1, verse 27. So soul was created with spirit in Genesis 1, 27. Are we together? Then Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. It says that um, God formed man of the dust of the ground. Now, that man that was formed from the dust of the ground was actually the body. Shall we get? This is the body. Because if you go up, Genesis 2, they said that there was no man to till the ground. Thank you. Verse 5. There was no, not a man to till the ground. So, you will now be wondering, the man they created in Genesis chapter 1, verse 27, where is the man? Now, that man that was created in 127 cannot touch ground. That man cannot hold she understand? He's like a spirit that just moves everywhere. Do we understand? So, um, this man cannot touch the ground. This man cannot weed the grasses. Because he doesn't have a suit that is made of the earth that can relate with the earth. Let's say amen. amen. Please, am I making sense? Yes, sir. Thank you. So, he didn't have an earthly suit. Do we understand? The only place where spirits touch cutlass is in Hollywood movies. Do you understand? The only place where spirits can drive car is in Hollywood. In real life, it doesn't happen. You know, I remember watching one movie when I was much younger. And then the person is a ghost. He wanted to cross road. He's looking right and left. Ghost. If you're a ghost, you will cross the road. Now flow through the cars, but I lie. <laughs> you know, different kind of stuff. But in real life, it doesn't happen. So this man that was created in Genesis chapter 1 was both spirit and soul. And they were created. Let's say created. created. Then Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. He now says, God formed man of the dust of the ground. This man that was formed from the dust of the ground is the body. We call it body, but God calls it man. This is the outward man. Then he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. So the body was formed. 
the spirit was created, the soul was created, the body was formed. Are we together? Then the soul also partook of deformation. So we have body formed, spirit created, but soul formed and created. Because the work of the soul is to be the middleman between the two. Shall we understand? So he understands the language of creation. He can relate with spirit. He understands the language of formation. He can relate to the soul. Shall we understand? So, and the way God designed a man will live is that God who is spirit, you know, you know in mathematics they taught us collecting like terms, right? So how do you collect like terms? Everything that is X, you put it on this side. Everything that is Y, you put it on this side. So if man is spirit, soul, body, and God is a spirit, if he wants to connect with man, which part of man do you think he will connect to? Spirit. So God will put something inside Adam's spirit. The spirit will breathe upon the soul. And then the soul will take that thing and relay it to the body. When the three entities do that thing, it is called obedience. Do we understand? So that is what is actually called obedience. That's what is called walking. Let's say amen. So the spirit partook of creation. The soul the soul partook of both creation and formation. And the breath of the spirit upon the soul is what is called understanding. Are we together? So the soul is like a converter. Converts things from the created realm into the realm of formation. Do we understand? So if the soul does not do that job, what is in the spirit will be locked away like that. And then the body will never be able to obey it. Let's say amen. So Adam and his wife died in their spirit. They died in their spirit. Then breath began to come. Their eyes were opened. Let's say their eyes were opened. And then they knew that they were naked. And then they went and sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. Are we following me? So what was the essence of the breath that came? The essence of the breath was to transfer the death in the spirit into the soul. But of course, we know God stopped it. Are we together? You know, God stopped it by giving them, you know, coat of animal skin. I remember one place where daddy sent myself and Pastor Leke to go and minister. You know, we were teaching a family. And then, it was the first person that said that thing. Before I now later heard it from daddy, that the coat of animal skin that God actually put around Adam and Eve was to stop the death that was in their spirit from actually encroaching into their soul. And the only time the Bible recorded it that Adam obeyed the breath was when they sealed fig leaves. So it didn't continue in obedience. Are we understanding? So, but of course, where Adam stopped, Cain continued. So Cain followed through to the very end until Cain died. Let's say amen. And then, now, the... Thank you, Jesus. So the... Lifestyle that Cain and his generation now inherited over the years now became natural life on earth. Let's say natural life. So what we call normal life is not normal. Are we understanding? What we call normal life is actually terribly abnormal. So our daddy has been teaching and then he's been talking to us about we are talking about the incorruptible generation, right? We will get there by God's grace. Sure you get. So, but our daddy has been teaching and he has touched on many, many things. Daddy touched on Christ's gospel yesterday night. Daddy touched on the ark. Daddy touched on the incorruptible seed. And then he has used a whole lot of things, you know, to say it here and there. Now, don't forget that in the beginning, what God wanted to give to man was life. The promise of God in Christ Jesus is actually the promise of life. It's not the promise of things. Man fell into things. Adam was not a pursuer of things. What do you think Adam was doing in the Garden of Eden? Do you think Adam was thanking God that there was enough mangoes to eat? That there was enough apples to eat? No. In fact, the way Adam related with the fruits is different from the way we relate with them. Adam was in a school in the Garden of Eden. And that school was the school of God to beget Adam in his own likeness and his own image. Are we following what I'm saying? All right. So, so Adam, Adam, was not, Adam wasn't even aware that he needed a wife until God said it is not good for man to be alone. So Adam was completely not alive to needs 
until he ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Are we together? Then by the time we go to Genesis chapter 6, the Bible says that God said, My spirit will not strive with man, for that he also is flesh. Let's say he also is flesh. So that means he's not the only flesh, right? So that means there were some other things. So man went to go and join himself to another estate. So there's an estate called flesh. Let's say estate. Now, you know what qualifies as flesh? Animals. When a goat wakes up in the morning and then is looking for food, sure you understand. How many of you have ever seen a he goat wanting to woo a, he, a she goat for mating? Do you understand? You know, the guy begins to behave as if something's wrong with it. And then he's moving like that, moving like that. You know, thank God I'm not an animal. Are you getting what I'm saying? Because I'm just thinking, how is this attractive? You know, the guy is just moving like that, moving like that, doing one kind, doing one kind, and then before you do anything, they're already mating. Now, when a goat is behaving that way, the goat is faithful to his own estate. And that estate is what is called flesh. So if you ask that goat, what exactly do you live for? Food, drink, shelter, mate. That's all. Now, that is what defines the estate called flesh. So, but something happened to man. Man now got to a point where God said, he also. <laughs> Shall we understand? He also is flesh. So, a man who is flesh is a man that the sum total of his life is the sum total of what an animal will live for. Now, that is what is called flesh. Let's say flesh. Now, many of us were born into this civilization called flesh. So we grew up to see it as normal life. Are we understanding? But Christ is God's way of returning us back to the original design. And then that's why many times we hear all our pastors say that it's not about that, it's not like this, it's not about that. You know, the hope of the gospel is not this one, it's not to make you travel out. They are not sadists. Are we understanding what I'm saying? They are just trying to raise us beyond that particular place. You know, the soul is like the prodigal son. The prodigal son was born in the father's house. And as somebody that was born in the father's house, the inheritance of the son was the father. But at some point, he said, no, give me what you have, not you. So, and then he took a portion of the goods of the father. And he went away. Are you following what I'm saying? Where did he go to? The Bible says he went to a far country. Then, going to that far country, he wasted the substance on riotous living. Until the Bible says a famine began in that city and it began to be in want. Then he now joined himself to a citizen of that city who now looked at him and degraded him further and told him, you can't eat what I eat. Go and be feeding my pigs. So the prodigal son and the pigs now began to share the same estate. Now that's the soul. Let's say amen. Now, so the father's house, where the inheritance was, is everlasting life. Are we getting what I'm saying? So, that was where the soul was in the beginning. Let's say amen. amen. He had not inherited the father, but was in line to inherit the father. But something happened. He went on a journey to a far country. Now, that is an antichrist journey. Are we getting what I'm saying? Then he joined himself to the citizen of a country who sent him to pigs. Those are demons. And that's why we need milk. Let's say milk. Because our journey back to the father's house, we have to rise from where pigs are. Let's say pigs. How many of us remember the Gadara man that Jesus cast out evil spirits from? Where did the spirits enter? Why? Because there is something about the nature of a pig that is compatible with demons. So the essence of the milk of the word, let's say the milk of the word, is to actually wash us from the character of demons. Demonic characters. Let's say demonic characters. Now, when you get born again, you have authority over demons. Are we understanding? But you see that authority over demons is not authority over their character. Malice is a character of a demon. Anger is the character. Those are demonic characters. Sure you understand? That thing that makes a man rise up from the pen of a pig and is smelling like one. There are some kind of people that when they come around you, you know all those kind of, you know, like Mommy Heli was here, was it yesterday? And then I listen to a portion of the message. Disrespect is a demonic character. Those are things demons carry and then they have donated to people. 
So you look at yourself and then you think, I'm in vogue. I am this, I'm that. But you don't know you're actually exhibiting a demonic character. Now, milk of the world is what washes those things. Lying is demonic character. So you can see somebody casting out demons, but he himself is, is, is keeping the things of those demons that he's casting. Did Judas Iscariot not cast out demons? At the end of the day, he was stealing money. Are we understanding what I'm saying? And that's why casting out demons is not a sign that you are God's general. Do we understand? You can cast out demons and still share eternity in lake with them. So casting out demons just means that you are a healthy Holy Ghost baby that knows his right. That's all. But you see that same Holy Ghost baby that is using... The, you know, the authority, the name of Jesus, cast out. I command you, get out. You still need to submit yourself to the milk of the word, to be purged of their traits that the soul had married. Then by the time you are done with that, you will now have to still journey back to the Father's house. And then you see that journey back to the Father's house is the gospel of Christ that helps us bridge the distance. They call it the power of God unto salvation. Are we getting what I'm explaining? So you get up from that place and then you will now begin to go back. You know, just the same way. Thank you, Pastor. He said he came to himself. Shall you get? Now, you know the prodigal son, it was easy for him to go back like that. You know why? Because he knew. Look at what the prodigal son said. In my father's house, even servants don't eat what I'm eating. So what am I exactly doing here? And then he said, I will arise and go to my father. Now imagine the prodigal son had given birth to children inside the pig's den. Do you understand? If you are telling the children that there is possibility of life elsewhere, different from what you guys are having, they will say it's not possible. So if you are telling them, I want to take you somewhere, they will begin to drag. You know why? Because somehow they have developed ability to survive among pigs. Now, that is exactly the same attitude many of us exhibit when we hear word of righteousness preachers. And then they are telling you that it's very possible for you to live differently. No, I like my life the way it is. When I have a problem, I fast, I pray, I sow seed, I do evangelism, I vow. Are you getting what I'm saying? And they are telling you that no, that's not where I'm supposed to be. Yeah. Sure, you understand? That you can actually live without these things. And then you are looking like, so imagine they now take some of those children and say, yeah, let's go back. As the journey is going, where are we going? He said, we are going to the father's house. Ah, no. We are. We, thank you, pastor. Pastor said, far country. Let's say far country. Let's say far country. You know, the, a blind man is not somebody who cannot see business opportunity. A blind man is somebody who can see a far off. Somebody, your sight can cover the distance between where you are and the father's house. Are you getting what I'm saying? But you know the funny thing? You know the funny thing? As the father, as the boy was taking steps like this to go, Every time when the father sits down in the house and then on the dining table, the boy's seat is always vacant. Wow. So every time the father looks at it, ah, the heart of the father goes for the boy. And I feel the father will always rise up every day and just walk a particular perimeter because there is a place he can't go beyond. And then he will try and see if he can see the boy. And then he will come back. And then he will wake up in the morning again and then he will just pace and then he will look and then he will not, he will go back. Are we getting it? Until the day that he sighted the boy. Now, you know where God can sight us? Christ. Do we understand? Where you will get to, where the father can see you is Christ. So they said he was lost. Now he is found. Are you getting what I'm saying? So that guy was lost. So the father would just come, and then one day the father saw him, and the Bible says the father ran. You know, I looked at that statement, and I'm like, the father ran. If that father is God, then we need to know God. As in, he ran, hugged the boy, fell on his neck, kissed him, and they threw a party in the house. Are we getting what I'm saying? So, and then, you know, the older brother was just standing and was looking, and he said, no, uh, I'm not going to go in. He said, this your brother was dead. He was lost. Actually, to be lost is to be dead. But there is a kind of death that breath of the father's house can still visit you. And there's a kind of death that you will just say, father's house, go. Father's house, knee. Are we, are we getting what I'm saying? Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay, so, so sorry, please. So, because of time. So, um, so the, where the father, where God will see you. Now, am I saying God is not seeing you? No. God is in, when you pray, who answers your prayers? It's God. But there are different kind of eyes. 
God can see you as a creature. And God can see you in relation to the promise. When God is looking with the perspe- from the perspective of committing and giving his all, he won't see you if you are not Christ. But when it comes to God, bless me, bless me. She understand, you know. Maybe it will just cushion your natural, do a whole lot of stuff. Of course he can. But there is a sight of God that will not be open until you are within the range of his visibility. And that's exactly what the gospel of Christ is about. Are we getting what I'm saying? So, and you know, daddy was talking to us sometime last week. And was talking about the fact that they gave him a ring. You know why they gave him a ring? Because he conquered what took him away. He conquered what took him away. Shall we understand? So, from the day he left the father's house, things have never been better for him. Things just kept going bad and bad and worse and worse and worse. Let's say amen. So now, for somebody, like I was describing, imagine that man already has children inside that place. And then they already have a family. And then the children are like, this is normal life. This this is what I know. This is what I know. You know, sometimes when you tell somebody that God has more for you than for you to be a household name, the person will just look at you and feel like, no, what, what do you mean? Sure you understand, you know. And then when it looks like, you know, you are blessed with certain things or you have some degrees or some level of influence among men. Sure you understand. It looks as if this is the promise that God has been speaking about. Now, the only reason you can feel good about those things is because you don't know the original promise. You remember when they built the temple of Solomon? Well, after they rebuilt that temple, the young men, they were hailing it. The old men were crying until the sound of crying and the sound of rejoicing mixed together. And from afar, when you are hearing, ah, it's like these people are rejoicing, no? And that person will say, no, it's like they are crying. And then you say, ah, it's like they are crying, no? No, it's rejoicing. No, it's crying. Now, tell me the strength of the crying of old men that can make it compete with the voices of young people. That was how much they cried. They said the old men cried because they felt like these guys didn't see the temple of Solomon. If you had seen the temple of Solomon, you would know that this one is refuse dump. A lot of us rejoice over refuse dumps. You understand now the gospel of Christ is what heals us from all of that. Let's say amen. amen. Praise God. <laughs> okay, so let's go to Romans chapter 1. I Romans chapter 1. Thank you. Romans chapter 1, verse 16, and then 17. Then I think I will say maybe two, three more things, and I will round off. I hope we are being blessed. All right, can we read this together? One to go. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. To everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Verse 7, verse 17. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Now, I told us that in the beginning, the intention of God is that he will give birth to man, right? He wants to raise a generation of his own kind. I like the way they introduced Jesus in Revelation chapter 3. They called him the beginning of the creation of God. That's the firstborn of that kind of generation. You know, our Lord Jesus was the first child or the first son that God produced. Thank you. This thing said the amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. So our Lord Jesus is the first kind. That's why they said, so that it will be the firstborn among many brethren. Are we understanding? So now you see that idea. That God had, that I want to generate, I want to raise a generation after my kind, that idea did not die. There's this Yoruba song we sing. That means when God has decided to do something, nothing can change it. So God said, I want to raise a generation after my kind. Satan intercepted the first project. He didn't face God. There's nothing sin and death can do. Because God conceived that idea before the first sin was created. Or before the first sin was committed. Sure you understand? So when a man of God says something, he said every time Satan tries to destroy what God has done or what God is doing, he ends up adding color and beauty to it. You know, so... So when we say... Being born again. Let's say being born again. So let's fast forward to the New Testament. So being born again. Okay. 
Being born again, when they preach to you, and then you give your life to Jesus, and then you get born again, you become a new creature in your spirit, like our daddy, you know, was teaching us. You become a new creature in your spirit. Now, the new birth is not all. The new birth is like, you know, because when Satan wanted to kill man, Satan didn't kill his body. Satan didn't put cancer on Adam's body. You know why he didn't do that? Because he knows that that's not where Adam is. She understand? The body is Adam's house. So if you are dressing body, but you leave the spirit and the soul, you have not touched the man. So when he wanted to kill Adam, he went straight for Adam's spirit and killed Adam's spirit. And the death in Adam's spirit was so serious that no gift of the spirit can raise it. So have you ever seen somebody who has gift of working of miracles? Somebody that can raise the dead. And then he's so anointed he raised the dead spirit. No. Lazarus died. Are we together? Lazarus died. When Jesus raised him from the dead, what part of him was raised? Did Jesus raise his spirit? No. Because you need another kind of material to raise spirits. So when they say somebody gets born again, it's a miracle. Are we understanding? It's a very powerful miracle. It's a miracle that no anointing on the minister can produce. The best they can do is heal you, grow hands, grow legs, and all of that. But no anointing of the Holy Ghost can reach to the Spirit and recreate it. It's not possible. You can't do it. So when Jesus was raised from the dead, they used a portion of the power that raised him from the dead. They didn't use all. They didn't use all. Because if they had used all to raise our spirits from the dead, like Daddy said, we would have been mad. Are you getting what I'm saying? We remember Nita. Do you know why? Because there will be too much of load of life in your spirit that your soul can't comprehend. Even Christ, our minds can't comprehend it. Are we getting what I'm saying? So there will have been too much. And it's also for our safety. Because if they raise our spirits like that, and then you now sin, <laughs> or you now turn, you will be beyond redemption. Shall we get? So they used a portion. Yes. You know, it will have sealed us in death, like Pastor Lake said. You know, so they use the portion of that spirit to now recreate our spirit. So before our spirit was Adamic spirits that had died. Are we understanding? But when power acted on it, it became Christ. It didn't become a new Adamic spirit, no. So that's why they call it quickening. They raised it with a change. Do we get it? so what died is different from what came back to life. So that's what happened to us when we got born again. So when we got born again, in our spirit, we are new. Let's say new. If they bring your spirit out, you have not met that man before. You'll just be looking at that man. That man has no past. When you are looking at the man, you'll be seeing righteousness and true holiness. You'll just be looking at the man like this. What kind of a man is this? Flawless, pure. And you see that your spirit hates this world. You see those things you are still struggling to do. Your spirit already hates this world. <laughs> your spirit hates this world. Your spirit is a charity being. Faith of charity intact inside that spirit. Are we getting what I'm saying? So now that is the spirit. Recreated human spirit. But we inherited a backlog of desolation in our souls. So our souls does not even understand what happened to our spirit when we got born again. So we don't know. So when they talk about new, 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 we think being a Christian is all about behaving well. I move away. I don't fornicate. Sure you understand. And fornication is bad. Let's say amen. Fornication will make you dull towards the things of God. Fornication will, raise, will make you get to a particular point where when God stands like this and is talking, you cannot understand again. Because Paul spoke about yielding your body as a living sacrifice so that you can prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Sometimes when people say they don't understand the message, check how you use your body. Because how you use your body sometimes determines how well your mind can prosper in the thoughts of God. Are we getting what I'm saying? So fornication is bad. Are we getting it? But there is more to being a Christian than not fornicating. There is more to being a Christian than not lying. There are a whole lot of Muslims who are like that. I discovered there is no culture, really. No culture that likes those things. No culture. That means a man who is dead has enough hate for fornication. Do you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> so there is more to Christianity than all of that. So we understand, like Pastor Lika was saying sometimes, you know that place where Daddy sent us to. We understand Christian religion, but we don't know Christ. 
You know, a hey, Christian should be like this. So when you are going out, let's go out fishing. I don't know how many of us have done it before. You are carrying your Bible like this. You are going to some people. They'll just get up and walk away. You know why? They know what you are coming to come and see. Yeah. Some of them came out of churches. Are you understanding? So they will tell you that. Ah, so you are telling me that I should not, I should not smoke, I should not drink, I should not do all of that. You know. So, but what Christ is is a mystery. Now, what happened to us in our spirit, our soul does not understand it. We don't know it. You see, that life is new. It's not a refurbished old life. It's not old life that is now doing right things. No. It's new. So that's why daddy was talking about lost yesterday. And he said that it's very possible for somebody to say, you know, you know, you know there are some people that every time they come out to preach, fornication is the message. <laughs> sure you understand. I discovered that most of them, they have issues with fornication. That's why that's the only thing they see in the Bible when they open it. Jezebel spirits. All those sisters, look at the way they are sitting. They are fornicators themselves. Are you getting what I'm saying? I, let me tell you. <laughs> let me tell you how you will know. <laughs> you know, Paul said, John said something. He said, if we say we have no sin, then at another point, he said, if we say we have not sinned. You know, those two things are not the same. Yeah. I can have sin, but I'm not doing it. Yeah. But before God, even though you are not doing it, you have it. And you see that thing you have, sometimes, can be showing you things. Everywhere you go, I remember one brother in my undergraduate days. Anytime we lead, we, we used to lead prayers, you know, prayer team in school. So we lead prayer, he would just come and meet me and say, Sister, so so, did you observe that these sisters that sit on this side, they don't, they don't sit down well? I said, How did you know? Do you understand? We are praying. You are leading prayer. My eyes are on Jesus. Are you getting what I'm saying? I don't understand what your eyes are on. You know, say those sisters are, you know, those sisters, they are. They are, they put out people's fire. Do you understand what I'm saying? One day I just looked at him and I said, Bros, you have a problem. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you have issues. Sure, <laughs> you understand. So there is more to Christianity than not doing those things. Are we getting what I'm saying? What God wants to see is a new life. New. This act should be graced by a conversation that is beyond this place. You know, Solomon said there is nothing new under the sun. But God says, no problem. I want to bring new men, new conversion with any tribe on the face of the earth. Shall we get? That is the beginning of the creation of God. Shall you understand? The only place where that thing has a title is God himself. When they say Christ, that's why daddy said when a Christ is fully grown, the only thing he's looking for is God. Because that's where he came from. So by the time you bring your spirit out and they put Mike in his mouth, what are you looking for? God. Your spirit is not looking for husband. Do you understand what I'm saying? Your spirit is not looking for job. He's not looking for money. What's your spirit looking for? God. What is future? God. Future is not traveling all over the place, going to Bahamas and all of that. That's not it. As far as your spirit is concerned, he has overcome all those things. Now that's your spirit. That's new. Your spirit can suffer long and be kind while he's doing it. Now, that's the nature of your spirit. Are we getting what I'm saying? That's the nature of my spirit. But of course, our souls are locked up in another place where the only thing our, that is real to our souls is what we can see. That's why we need a preacher. Let's say preachers. Let's say preachers. And that's one, one, why God raised our daddy and God raised all our pastors. And God will still give us more pastors like daddy said yesterday. Because the work is plenty. You know why we need preachers? If there are no preachers, when you see the life being exemplified, you will call it something else. On the day of Pentecost, the Holy Ghost came. Bah! 120 began to speak in tongues. Because there was no preacher, somebody looked and said they are drunk. Then a preacher arose and said, no, this is that which was spoken by Prophet Joel. Are we getting what I'm saying? He said, for God has said in the last days, all the people talking, some of the people talking like that, they know the scripture. But they needed a preacher to actually let them know that this is exactly what you are seeing. So without a preacher, you will have movement in your spirit. You can't interpret it. I remember when I was in secondary school, I used to have issues with anger. Anger. Terrible. I was very short. I remember one of my seniors said that the anger inside this boy already has beards. You know, very short boy. <laughs> but anger, ah, that was my friend. Very angry. So, but I discovered that anytime somebody would just deal with me and then I wanted to retaliate in my spirit. I would just hear, let it go. But of course, because there was no doctrine, you will not know that that let, let it go was actually the Holy Ghost speaking to you or the language of the new man because the new man does not revenge. Shall we understand? So there was no doctrine. There was nothing to tune me to the voice that was speaking from within me. So anytime you just hear, let it go, you just be like, let, let what go. 
this one. Like, yeah, sure you understand. If I let this one go, that's how all of them will just be riding me. Are we getting what I'm saying? And then you just come out and then I'll just talk back, 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 back like that. Until later, I began to hear what? And then I began to hear about meekness and lowliness. Then I discovered that this thing actually is not a strange reality. It has been present with me all along. But there was no preacher. Do we understand? So the essence of preaching and word that we are hearing is to tune the soul to the frequency of the spirit. So that now the soul understands that, okay, when things like this come to me, it is actually the new man that is speaking. It's the civilization of the new man trying to overtake my soul. Are we getting it? And as you begin to yield to the new man, you put off old garments. You put off the old garments. Ah, God will help us in the name of... The, until we become new. Let's say new. Let's say new. Now, when God says new, it's new. New is something that has never been seen. New is something that is tiaroba. Should we understand? As in new. When you see the new man, you will fall in love with him. The new man is not spooky. The new man is not hypocritical. That new man is Christ. So if you have been hearing faith, hope, charity, it's just Christ at different stages of development. Are we together? So charity man is the full growth Christ that hates this world. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 2. Then I would begin to... Hebrews chapter 2. Give me from, I think, verse 10. Hebrews chapter 2 from verse 10. Um, okay. Can we read this together? I want to go. For it became him... For whom are all things, and by whom are all things, in bringing many sons unto glory, uh -huh, to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. Next verse. For both he that sanctifieth, and they who are sanctified are all of one, for which cause he is not ashamed to call them brethren. So that means... Okay, let's read verse 12 together. I want to go. Saying, I will declare thy name unto thy brethren... In the midst of the church will I sing praise unto thee. Let's say amen. amen. So, hmm. so the people Jesus will call brethren here are the sanctified. So, the reason, so Jesus called them brethren here who are what? Let's say sanctified. sanctified. So, the essence of the gospel of Christ is sanctification. Now, what are they sanctifying you from? They are sanctifying you from what Jesus hates. To sanctify is to actually make separate or to make holy. The word holy is separation. Are we together? Now, there are many things Jesus hates. So, sure you understand. Jesus, gentle, meek, and lowly. There are things he hates. Jesus was speaking in the book of Revelation. He said, some people are teaching the doctrine, some doctrines, say, which I hate. So Jesus has hates too. There are things he hates. There are th thank you. So as thou also them that hold the doctrine of the Colatans, which I hate. So there are things Jesus hates. Then there was a church that Jesus was saying that, see, if they don't, I will come, I will kill our children with death. Jesus can kill. He will kill with death. He's not coming to save. He's coming to kill. Do you understand? It's just that, you know, the killing at the end of it is still to save. But he can kill. You know, there are, sometimes some people say, oh no, God is this, God is that. A man that can heal is a man that can also kill. So Jesus said, I will kill our children with death and all the churches shall know <laughs> that I am he which searcheth the reins and hearts and I will give unto every one of you according. So there is death so that people will now learn life. Are we understanding what I'm saying? So, but Jesus kills. So he has hates. The first thing Jesus hates is this world. John 7, 7. Give me John chapter 7, verse 7. So, can we read this together? I want every one of us to read this together. John 7, 7. One, two, go. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So, he said the world cannot hate you, but me it hates. Why? Because I testify of it that the works thereof are evil. Do you know why Jesus hates the world? Jesus hates anything that will make you a lower version of who God made you to be. Do we understand what I'm saying? He, why does he hate this world? Because it will make you a lower version. An inferior version of who you are destined to be. So Jesus hates anything that reduces the quality of a man's life. He hates it. 
Those doctrines in the book of Revelation are also doctrines that are teaching another kind of everlasting life different from the one that God wants to give. So, but of course, those things will never give everlasting life. What they will give rather is death. Anything that will make you depreciate, Jesus hates it. So, a sanctified man who is a new man or a Christ person, a man who has been raised, who is Christ, is somebody who has been separated from what Jesus hates. And the first of it is this world. Let's say this world. So, let's go back to that Hebrews chapter 2. So, he said, both he that sanctified and they who are sanctified are all of one, for which cause is not ashamed to call them brethren, saying, I will declare thy name unto my brethren. So, these brethren are the people that Jesus will now declare God to. So that means if we are not separated from what Jesus hates, we will never really know God. Are we following me? We will do church, but we won't know God. The only person that can teach God is Jesus. That is our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's say our Lord Jesus Christ. He said, I will declare your name. You remember that place in Matthew 28 where Jesus was speaking and Jesus said, I will, he said, no man can know the son except the father. And no man can know the father except the son. And to whomsoever the son chooses to reveal him. And they are showing us here that the people that Jesus will teach God, let's say God, are people who are his brethren. And who are the brethren? The sanctified. Those who have been separated from what Jesus hates. They are the people that Jesus will now teach God. Let's say God. So now all these are still preparations for the incorruptible seed. Because the seed is a very high seed. Let's say amen. And that seed is actually the beginning of the journey of being begotten of God. Are we together? Pastor has said everything. Share you understand. So, the seed, like daddy taught us, daddy taught us that the seed is the house. Now, if God is going to come inside you, then you have, you have to have a house that can house him or that can accommodate him. Now, if God is everlasting, do you think his house will be grass? It's not possible. So, you can't be flesh and house God. In fact, you cannot be flesh and the message of the incorruptible seed will make sense to you. It's not possible. So when they are saving us from this world, they are also redeeming the ability of our minds to process God's thoughts. So, so the seed will come first. And then the seed, that is said, is the incorruptible seed. That is the bread. And that bread is like the house. You know the ark of the covenant actually looks like bread. When you look at it, it's like that. Sure you understand? It's like, you know, <laughs> it's like bread. But there is something inside the bread. It's actually the laws, the testaments. And that law, that it calls it the life. Are we understanding what I'm saying? Let's say life. Let's say life. Let's say bread. Let's say blood. Let's say bread. So that bread is house. Let's say house. Okay, let me ask you a question. Somebody is asking, okay, so, but they are saying it's not my body and all of that. When they say put off the old man, where is he? You know what you can put on, put off is clothes. So how did clothes, how did the old man get there? So you see that spirit that is dead, when it leads the soul, and the soul obeys a garment. So it's like the soul, the spirit, that dead spirit has weaved the garment for the soul by reason of years of obedience. So that garment is there. It's the thinking cap of the soul. So when you, ask, when, when you say prosperity, that's what interprets prosperity for the soul. Sure you understand? It's just around the mind of that soul. It's between the soul and the body. But that's the actual cloth that that soul is wearing. Do we understand what I'm explaining? So that thing is just there. It's like Lazarus. He was raised from the dead, but he was still inside grave clothes. A living man inside. So because he was inside grave clothes, he could not walk. Then Jesus said, lose him and let him go. Take the grave clothes away from him. Jesus raised the spirit. It is men that will remove the clothes. Are we understanding what I'm saying? So, Jesus raised the spirit, but Jesus did not remove the clothes. The people that were with him were the ones that were commissioned to remove the clothes. So, you can never say, this old journey, let me just face Jesus alone. I don't need anybody. You will remain in grave clothes. So, he said, lose him and let him go. Are we getting what I'm explaining? God will show us mercy. 
in the name of Jesus. So the seed is coming. And then they said that the seed, daddy called it the first, he said he called it obedience. Let's say obedience. obedience. What does that mean? That means that you see the incorruptible seed is going to generate a house that can obey the life that God wants to put inside it. Do we understand? So that house is a stature of obedience. And let me tell you, the only person that can raise this house is Jesus. Let's say Jesus. So, let me round off on this note. <clears throat> um, God said, Moses said, he said, a prophet like unto me will God raise. Now, there were many, many prophets in the Old Testament. Elijah was a prophet, but he was not a prophet like unto Moses. You know why? Because Moses had a prophetic ministry that was tied to a house. He was faithful in all his house. Are we getting what I'm saying? So there were many, many prophets. Amos was a prophet. Jeremiah was a prophet. Ezekiel, Daniel, all of them were prophets. But they were not a prophet like unto Moses. So the prophet like unto Moses actually is our Lord Jesus Christ. And the first thing he wants to do is to cultivate a house or raise a house that God will put testimony in. And how they will raise the house, first and foremost, it had to be, you know, he has to begin to speak the seed, the incorruptible seed. I was listening sometime to Pastor Timmy in Port Harcourt. Pastor said something very amazing. And he was talking about every prophet has the word. The word of the Lord came unto Jeremiah. The word of the Lord came unto Ezekiel. He said, but our Lord Jesus Christ is a prophet with a word. And that word is the word of God. Living, powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. So you see that word, they want to use it to raise a house that they will now put life of God inside. They will put the life that is compatible with the building. Share you understand? Inside the soul. And you have to obey it and store it. Keep it inside you. Are we getting what I'm saying? Are we getting what I'm saying? So Jesus said, except you eat my flesh and eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no life in you. Let's say in you. So that means the destiny of those things. We are supposed to be a house of storing those things. So we store it. We hear the words. We obey it. And then we keep it. That thing is there. It's inside. Are we getting it? Let's say it's inside. Let's say it's inside. It has to first form how we think. Form how you see your brother. Form how you see your sister. Give you another eye with how you see authority. Are we getting what I'm saying? Give you eyes. Give you sense on how to relate with your wife. How to relate with people all around you. Now, that is the nature of the garments. That's the nature of the house. That's the nature of the image. Are we understanding? And then you have to have lived like that for a while. And then they will now put life inside. You know, when pastor was ministering, pastor was talking about image and life. It just popped up in my head. Now, no wonder they call Jesus the express image of God's person. That's not just an image, an image that can express. So that is a house that has life inside it. Are we getting what I'm saying? So it's a thing to have image, actually. It's another thing for the image to be living. And the person who puts life inside this particular image was the first prophet. Let's say first prophet. Let's say first prophet. But there is a prophet that is not false. Let's say amen. That is the prophet like unto me. <laughs> That's what Moses was saying. That's the prophet like unto me. That prophet is our Lord Jesus Christ. God who has in sundry times and in diverse manners spoken to our fathers by the prophets. As in these last days spoken to us by his son. That is his own prophet. A prophet of his things. But that prophet first will raise a house as a servant. Raise the house. Then they will now put the life inside. Let's say amen. So tonight, you know, I want to encourage every one of us because I think we are going to be closing soon. And then let's go, let's rest. And let us make our minds to come tonight and be blessed. Now, when it comes to serving of bread, incorruptible seed. Now, you know, you can read the Bible. The Holy Ghost can teach you many things. The Holy Ghost can wake you up like this and tell you what will happen in Liberia in the next five years. The Holy Ghost can wake you up and tell you what happens in Russia. Sometimes the Holy Ghost does that. You, they are not asking him. Are you understanding? He will just come and tell you that. Do you know that <laughs> social person is going to be the next president after this one? The Holy Ghost can do that. But let me tell you, 
that the Holy Ghost is doing that does not mean that the Holy Ghost, the, the Holy Ghost does that for you does not mean you have authority to administer bread. That doesn't mean you have authority to open scripture and go into doctrine. No. He can tell you things about your life. He can tell you that don't enter this bus. So. All the people inside this bus will have accidents. Don't do this one. The Holy Ghost can tell you many, many things. But you see when it comes to the administration of bread, it's not given to everybody. So you can hear. You can be hearing the Holy Ghost talking to you about your family and many, many things. But it may never deal with you concerning doctrine. Why? Because at the breaking of the bread, where Jesus fed 5,000, he collected the bread from a boy. Then he gave thanks. He broke it. He gave the apostles. Then the apostles broke it for the multitudes. But because before the apostles broke the bread for the multitude, you know what happened? They were commanded to sit down in their 50s. How many were they? 5,000. Divide 5,000 by 50. What do you get? That's 100. That's 100 folds. So all of them just sat like that, 50, 50, 50, 50, so in 100 places. Do we understand? You know, I was looking at that parable of the sower, 30 fold, 60 fold, 100 fold. It's at 100 fold you begin to talk about bread. Shall we understand? So, and all of them had to sit. Let's say sit. Let's say sit. So tonight, fight that thing that makes you always get up every 10 minutes. Are you getting what I'm saying? And that thing wants to rob you of your portion. Shall we get it? So sit. So all of us will sit. Shall we get And then bread will be broken. And Jesus will give the bread to the apostles. Wait. You may not like their faces, but the choice of God has fallen upon them. There's nothing you can do about it. Sure, you understand. I remember you used to have one friend like that who said one of our pastors in EGFM. He said, I don't like the way he talks because his grammar is not very fluent. That's your problem. Sure, you understand. If he wants to say was and he says is, that is your problem. The choice of God is upon that man. You had better embrace everything. Sure, you understand. If not, that man, without that man, there is no allocation. The Bible says the, the Pharisees frustrated the counsel of God for themselves because they didn't submit to the baptism of John. So, God can have desire for you. God can have plan for you. God can have purpose for you. But everything can go to waste because you don't like the vessel he has sent. Are we understanding what I'm saying? And I'm saying this to say this one thing. Sometimes, you see daddy ministering. Three hours, four hours, the ministration is going. Don't let your heart drift. Now, instead of you to sit down and be thinking, that, what is he saying? I don't even understand this thing. You can also see people like you who are doing, wow, wow. Ask yourself, why am I not understanding like that? When you are sitting in front of a favorite movie, you don't look at time. Like, this thing is too much. You want to know the next. Am I correct? What's the next thing? What's the next thing? Can you come tonight with the art that wants to know the next thing? Do you understand? So what will now happen at the end? And sometimes the key to the message is just at the end. That it just goes like this and goes like this and goes like this. And then the last 15 minutes. Now, somebody will say that, ah, that's easy, now I'll just sleep. In the last 15 minutes, I'll wake up. Are <laughs> you understanding? You don't know when the last 15 minutes will be. You might just be waking up to the grace. Are we together? And you see that whole journey is preparing you for the last 15 minutes. That whole journey is like the house they are building for the testimony to enter. Are you getting what I'm saying? So if you did not follow the journey, you will miss out at the destination. Do we get? So it's bread. Let's say bread. So it's bread and fish. And daddy has taught us that fish is blood. Shall we understand? It's bread and fish. So we are going to be sitting down in our folds. Are we getting what I'm saying? Gadite is a fold. Let's say amen. The incorruptible generation is a generation that will actually have to endure doctrine. They said endure, not enjoy. Endure sound doctrine. You can imagine sitting down and you are hearing what is killing you. Sure you understand? But that's the generation that will put the serpent on his back. Are we getting what I'm saying? That's the generation that will bring down the dragon. Are we together? So we are um, a generation God is raising that will actually make Jesus proud. Hallelujah. So we should, like pastor said, every, pastor has said a whole lot of things I probably will have even said, you know, but there's no need to say them again because pastor has said it. Let's believe the message. As long, just open your Bible. Is it there? That is it. Pepper sellers in the Old Testament, in the early church, they understood these epistles. You know that in the early church, they didn't have gathered pastors like we have. You know they didn't have those things. You know they would just come to the church, everybody would gather together, and they would read those things, and they will understand. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened. Nobody, they will understand. But nowadays, we have a lot of professors, but we are dull. It's sin that made us dull. 
But God, by eating, by bread, actually wants to, you know, wake, you know, remove that dullness so that we can understand things at God's level. The Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. I hope we are blessed. I hope we are blessed. Let's say the incorruptible generation. That's a generation of people that will never die. Sure, you understand. I remember one of the brothers that helped me. Helped me. Let me just say this to encourage you. Helped me when I was in school. And, you know, looking back, I think that was, those were days when God was really, uh, then, if you ask me, I'll tell you that I was already handling meat. But looking back, I discovered it was milk. Sure, you get So, this particular man that really helped me, he's a minister, he's a pastor, he has his church, you know, in one of the states in the southwest. So, he came to see his fiancée in our school, and then um, we were together, and then he just began to pray. He prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed. He said, no, he said, I feel like praying. I feel like praying. So we joined him to pray, myself and a friend of mine. And then we began to pray. Then as we prayed, we prayed for like maybe 35 minutes. He just laid hands on me and he told me. He said, your diet has changed in the spirit, said the Lord. He said, he that told, I have fed you with milk. He said, but not too long from now, I will begin to feed you with meat and strong meat. And whosoever partakes of it shall not die. I remember that word. I kept it. You know, after, shortly after, I discovered that ah, that word actually was word of righteousness. Word of righteousness is meat and strong meat. If you partake of it, you will not die. So the incorruptible generation is a generation that will not die. Are we understanding? But you know, the first place to defeat death is inside you. And that's why they have to put things inside you that will combat the arrangement of death that we have in our soul. Part of our death arrangement is time. It's time. We just sit down. Ah, ah. So, something just looks like, ah, what are, we are wasting time. Let's just go and do something else. By the time they leave you, you'll just be lurching all over the place. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Don't have any. The reason why you came to camp is so that you will hear what? So part of that arrangement of death, God anoints his servant and moves him to defeat that thing. Shall we get? Because after a while, they'll tell you to come and walk with God. And walking with God means you have to throw your wristwatch away. Are you getting what I'm saying? But first and foremost, they will have to start <laughs> at this particular level. Are we blessed today? I don't know if I've been able to help anybody. She will understand. You know, if I've not done so, forgive me. In fact, all, you see all these our pastors, they're all big men of God. All of them. They can teach better. I'm looking at Pastor Tayo, Pastor Goodness. As I'm preaching, I'm just checking them. They are checking the SI unit of everything I'm sharing. Okay, is it correct like this? Oh, that application of that scripture. <laughs> Thank you so much. God bless us in the name of Jesus. Are we blessed this morning or this afternoon? Can we just rise up and give God thanks? I want us to thank God for his mercy. I want us to thank God. Everybody, let's raise our hand and thank the Lord Jesus for the blessing. Oh, we bless you. We bless you, Jesus. We thank you. We give you all the glory. We bless you. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. I don't need to ask you if you were blessed. <laughs> now, I want you to say thank you, Pastor Mike, according to the degree of your blessing. Thank you, Pastor Mike. <laughs> Hallelujah. Can we say Pastor Mike? Amen. You see, it's like taking ice cream. Somebody says, like taking ice cream with cane. You know, maybe your daddy wants to cane you, not give you ice cream. You're not taking the ice cream and he's flogging you, but you're taking ice cream. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you so much, Pastor. Thank you. You've been um, a blessing to us today, and you've always been a blessing to us. We are grateful. Hallelujah. Can we say thank you, Pastor Tokwe? Thank you, Pastor Tokwe. Amen. Praise God. Um, you may just be seated briefly. Um, we are true. I want to emphasize again, like Pastor said, um, please let us try to rest um, for the grand finale this evening. It's going to be explosive. Um, so please, even if it's one hour sleep, just go to your bed, just close your eyes and wake up and have your bath, then come for the evening session. I, al I also want us to appreciate Pastor Charles in the house again, as Pastor has appreciated. He's a pastor and an elder in this world. If you are not doing it well, can we clap for Pastor for being seated in our midst? Amen. Hallelujah. 
Pastor, any other announcement? Amen. Praise God. Shalom. Please make sure you sleep. Try to sleep. Even if it's one hour. Nobody must sleep tonight. Huh? Shalom. You can go. Praise God. Praise God. Oh, okay. Praise God. Praise God. Let's not forget that evening session starts by 4 p.m. today. So by 4 p.m., please, let's come to the hall for the breakout session. Thank you.